blur for the rest of his life. So he went into acting a little bit and a bunch of other stuff, and he runs a gym. But what he also does, and this is what I was most concerned with, is he's a stuntman. He's an actual, legit stuntman. He's huge, by the way. He's like a monster person. Um, he's the type of person you would be scared of if you saw him fucking your wife and you came in you'd almost be like oh uh so sorry to disturb you guys margaret uh we'll talk about this later but uh go ahead and finish up you guys do whatever you need to that's how big he is he's also bald and he has all these tattoos he's just a big fucking man uh so he's a stunt man so we just talked about uh what that was like you know all the details and all the all the ins and outs of it it was kind of interesting i don't know about you guys i've never met a stunt man before in my life so, uh, so it was cool. Um, he came over to my apartment and we talked about shit and then we went to eat salads and he told me that humans shouldn't eat grains. Um, no wheat. He doesn't eat wheat. He doesn't eat, uh, what is the other grains? Uh, quinoa, couscous. He doesn't eat Israeli couscous. So pretty much the whole goddamn Whole Foods salad bar that I've been going to every day when I get high. It's the best, by the way, if you go to Whole Foods. Not all of them have it, but some of them. Because like, if you go to a regular supermarket and go to, the, go to the salad bar, you get like raw everything. Raw lettuce, raw mushrooms, raw tomatoes, onions, all that stuff. But at Whole Foods, they have that raw salad bar too. And then you put whatever dressing on. But then they also have the sweet salad bar with like different flavored tofus and two different types of couscouses. Couscousim. Um, and then they have tabbouleh, a couple flavors of that. They have these sweet lima beans and garlic. It, it's just all this sweet. It's like they have this kale with this emerald lemon. Wait, what was it? What was it? Wait. No, they have now they have garlicky kale, which is not as good. But they used to have, fuck, it was sesame. It was like lemon sesame or emerald sesame kale. Kale is probably looks like the grossest of all the vegetables. It was so fucking good. My shit's. Came out often and massive. I took the biggest dump I've ever taken. If you check my Twitter account, uh, it's at Ari Shafir, you will see a picture of a dump I took that was so monstrous that not only did it clear the level of water, uh, it pretty much, like as it was shitting more and more, it just continued up until there was just no, con- no, like, there was no change. It was just straight from my ass into the pile of shit. Like it was all together. It was like a silo had opened up and started pouring grain out, like the end of uh, Witness. You guys remember that, where uh, Harrison Ford had to pretend like he was Amish for a while to protect some kid who witnessed a murder? Anyway, at the end, uh, the silo opened up and fucking buried somebody. But the silo didn't empty completely, but by the time – because by the time the pile like moved high enough, it went into the, the, aerial of the, the area of the silo. So it just stopped up the rest of the grain from coming out. That's what my dump was like. It was so massive that I dumped to the asshole level. Not quite that far. But I'm telling you, it's so fucking good. But Tate told me that I can't eat any of these goddamn grains anymore. They're bad for me. Humans aren't supposed to eat grains. Look, here's the deal. If you help somebody with your – because he got in my head about it. If you help somebody try to become better at like working out or dieting or anything like that, don't concentrate on the shit they're not doing. Give them a kudos and an attaboy. For the shit they are doing. Okay? It's like people are like, oh, you know, I work, I run every day now for, for an hour a day. Instead of going like, oh, that's awesome, man, because you're a fat fuck. So that's awesome that you run for an hour a day now. Instead, what everybody else does is they go, oh, yeah, we're running. It's only cardio. You got to lift weights. You got to mix that with like uh, cross train and PDX90 it. And, uh, and it's like, why, why are you ruining this guy's dream? Okay? It's just fucking rude. By the way, the rudest thing I ever did, I'm just remembering this now. <laughs> this is so wrong. But the rudest thing I ever did was I was driving, I believe I was in the passenger seat. It was in Silver Spring, Maryland, uh, on Arcola Boulevard. Uh, at a light, this lady was jogging and she was chubby. This is when I was in high school. She was chubby. And you know how people get up to a light when they're jogging and they sort of like keep jogging but in place at the light uh, while she's waiting for it to change? So I was stopped at the red light. She was waiting for it to change, and she just stopped jogging. She didn't jog in place. She just stayed still. And I rolled down my window, and she could sort of tell because I was right next to her in the car. Um, she was right outside the window. So she, could, she looked over, and I just go with a serious face right as our light turned green. She, I, <laughs> I just go, keep running. <laughs> it was so fucking wrong. 
God, I didn't want to. I wanted to laugh at it, but I can't. I was so fucking evil. She was trying to work on herself. She was getting out there. She was jogging. She was a fat chick trying not to be fat. And some asshole punk fucking 16-year-old Jew just ruined her dreams and told her, fuck, she, oh, hopefully she kept running. God, I'm so embarrassed. Do you ever think about stuff like that and just get embarrassed about the way you used to think? Anyway, um, so that's this episode. It's all about Tate Fletcher and, uh, and, uh, and his uh, job being a stuntman. It's really fucking interesting. You'll, you'll listen to it. You'll gain a lot out of it. Um, in terms of stand-up, I have, I'm taping my CD. It's this coming week. If you guys are around Denver, Colorado, please come uh, to the Comedy Works on Saturday. Just get your tickets already. Just Saturday, um, May 12th uh, is when I'm recording. I'm doing all three shows. I'm recording all three shows and just mixing those in. But uh, I'm also there 10th and 11th, so come to those too if you can't do the 12th. But I want all the cool people to, to come on the 12th so the show's better. And then I'm going to Kansas City to Stanford & Sons. Oh, it's Comedy Works, by the way, is the club in Denver. Stanford & Sons in Kansas City, the, uh, May 16th through the 20th. My next storyteller show, which I love. Those are my favorite L.A. shows. Um, and uh, I'll be doing new material for that because I always do because I'm out of fucking stories. So I have to think them up. Um, it's May 22nd at the Improv. Uh, it's all stories of near-death experiences. I believe Ralphie May is going to be doing it. I still have to ask some other people. I don't know who I'm going to ask. But Ralphie May, he was so fucking good the last time he did um, – he did the storyteller show, and I'm assuming he'll be good. To, he's one of the few guys that really fucking tackles it like he should. He does. Burt Kreischer does. Joey Diaz does. There's a few guys who have done it multiple times. Moshe Kasher, uh, Margaret Cho. But they're always fucking good. They go for it, and they, they're funny and fucking poignant. Uh, I, I would like to say poignant, but I can't really because I'm not positive what it means. So, uh, so come to that. May 22nd. It's at the Improv. And by the way, we've made it a full charity show now. So... Um, we're donating the – not just the profits, all the fucking proceeds. Oh, I got to tell them so they don't fucking tax me on it. But I'm just uh, giving away – I have been, but I'm just giving away all the money we get. We keep it at $5 so everybody can come in and get a seat and just fucking watch a great show. That's all I really care about is just doing great comedy. So uh, we keep it at $5 and we're giving the money to Planned Parenthood because that is a charity that directly affects – uh, my life, because uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I love, I'm a huge fan of abortion. And uh, Planned Parenthood is a great place to get one. So if you're ever in the market for an abortion, please check out P- Planned Parenthood immediately. They, they give the best and the most often uh, abortion-wise. So um, we are really giving the money to Planned Parenthood because they're under attack from the Republicans and the fucking Christians. So they, they do a lot more than just abortions. Uh, but don't downplay the abortions. Those are really important. And then, uh, then uh, June seventh through the ninth, I'm at uh, Foxwoods at Comics at Foxwoods in Connecticut. And June thirteenth, I'm at Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco. June thirteenth, that's a big show because they get like most of the door. So uh, come out to that if you're in San Francisco. And then right after that, I go from there straight to straight to um, Sacramento to do the punchline for the week. But it's just one show in San Francisco, uh, June thirteenth. Just get your tickets. I don't know how much they are. Hopefully, they're not above twenty. Um, uh, and come out. I'll do a couple stories that I'm going to bury after the CD, and then and then uh, the rest will be this, the, the 40 minutes I've built um, since then. So um, I think that's it. Wait, was there anything else? Oh yeah, and I'm doing Blues Fest in Ottawa. Anyone who's in Ottawa. Oh, by the way, the fucking secret show in Toronto was awesome. Anybody who was there, it was so fucking fun. It was so much fun. I did some corporate gig the night before, and it was terrible. There was like 200 people there, and 20 of them were listening. It was just not good. But I did get to meet um, Doug Gilmore, some Hall of Fame hockey player, uh, which I just got into hockey, so I don't really know him. But I also met Dan, uh, Rob, uh, Bob Levy, the comedian. He's really cool and funny. But um, Brutus the Barber Beefcake was there, popular WWF wrestler from the fucking 80s and 90s. Brutus the Barber Beefcake was there, and he fucking cut somebody's hair. They set up a, a stage like uh, some guy said wrestling's fake. It wasn't that good a, a setup. Uh, and then Brutus put him in a chokehold and then uh, chopped off his hair with his clippers. It was pretty fucking cool. Um, but the next day, uh, I went and performed at one of my top five clubs or rooms to perform in in the world, uh, cl- uh, the Underground Comedy Club, uh, Clandestiny. It's sort of a secret 
room, semi-secret, uh, in Toronto. I'm not going to tell you where it is or what the deal is, but it's fucking cool. And there was 100 people there fucking smoking pot during the entire time the show was on. It was just thick in the air. It was such a fun show. My friends uh, uh, Patrick Capolino and Manola Zantanos and uh, Rob Mayhew, they all opened. All those, They were all Toronto comics. And uh, it was just a fucking great vibe. It was 100 people. I thought there'd be 15 people that showed up because I was just there. But it was like 100 people. Uh, I think she said over 100. It was just cool. Some of these like old like pot patients, like real patients, like real fucked up. They needed to survive kind of stuff. And then a bunch of people were just fans. And they were all potted. Some people didn't smoke, but everybody got a secondhand high. I'm telling you, this thing was like a giant hot box. I, I had at some point I had to ask Manolis, the other comic, to bring me an orange juice. Because just being on stage, my voice was getting so fucking, my throat was getting so raspy and, and chopped up. Just because it, it, you could barely even see. <laughs> it was so thick. And everyone was just there having a great time. It was just such a fun, fun, fun environment. And that's, uh, that's what I love about stand-up. Just shows like that. Man, man, I love that room. So thank you to, uh, to Puff Mama for putting it together. Uh, thank you to Bong Man. <laughs> I forgot your real name, but for Bong Man for uh afterwards for getting us high off that crazy butter hash whatever that was um and just everybody who showed up thank you very much that's it's the only reason i do comedy is for the feeling i get when i do comedy um and when you guys come and make it a, that cool feeling that just makes it all worth it it's like what parents must feel or what they say they feel when they uh when they see their child smiling at them and they're like this all makes it worth it it sort of is like that for stand-up when you get a great show I don't care if it's a fucking like free show, if it's a bar room across town, or if it's some like gigantic fucking venue with three thousand people. If the crowd is cool, it, man, it just keeps you doing stand up. It just gets you into it. Everybody laughs. They're chilled out about the harsh stuff. They know that I'm making jokes about harsh things. They don't get like, how dare you talk about this? I had some lady at the comedy store tell me that I was a. What was that? She goes, "You're a sick bastard." But she didn't say it in a funny way, like, you sick bastard. She was like, you're a sick bastard. And I was like, ma'am, do not use that kind of language. Um, so anyway, thank you all for coming out. I really do appreciate it. And that's why I want all you guys to come, if you're there, to come in Denver um, on Saturday so that cool people will be in my show and not uh, horrible, horrible, annoying people. Uh, oh, also, I'll be in Ottawa for Blues Fest. Did I say that? I'll be doing the first four days of Blues Fest, Blues Fest uh, with Paula Bell. So, I'll see you there. Um, and if you're in Ottawa, I'll probably need a place to, to go to hang out and do stuff after the shows and after the music festival is over at 11 p.m. every day. So, come by. Let's all hang out. Let's do some fun stuff. Um, in terms of sponsors, I have still have Amazon.com and Gamefly.com. I guess you guys have just started like using it. Um, they told me it would take like three or four weeks before... That's how advertising works. So now you start using it, and I made some cash. So thanks a lot, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, people all clicked on the Gamefly. It's just you just go and do it. You just go to gamefly.com slash Ari and sign up for a two week free trial. You can cancel after that. You can keep going. It's a cool service. So if you're into video games, keep doing it. It's cheaper than than buying new games and then like wasting them. But um, if you're not into it, just do the two-week free trial. They, they, they give me like a grip of cash, and it's fucking helping me pay for everything. So what I got for the last month has paid for all the, all the, the guests I've paid for. Um, uh, and then Amazon.com. If you're ever shopping at Amazon.com or Amazon.ca, if you're in Canada, uh, please, please go through my website first, AriShafir.com. And, um, and just on the right-hand side, there's, there's three links. There's a... Link, it says price, selection, convenience, Amazon.com. It's brown. If you click on that, that takes you to Amazon, and then you can just shop. You can just do your regular shopping. There's one right below that that says Amazon.ca. That's for Canadians. Uh, I figured out why they need a separate one because if they do the .com, everything gets shipped from America. And if they do the .ca, everything gets shipped from wherever they do it in Canada. Um, so just go to there. Click. Through. It's like one extra click. Instead of going straight to Amazon, you go to Ari Shafir or AriTheGreat.com and then click Amazon. And then if you're already logged in to Amazon, you'll still be logged in. Uh, and just do all your regular shopping. It won't cost you a dollar extra. They just give me percentage back. I figure if they're making like off 100 bucks, if they make like $25, they'll just – I don't know what their take is. Let's just say it's $25. Bucks. Um, 
they give me two. Like it comes out of their end. So that's my point. I have no idea how much I'm making. It's probably not 25 bucks out of 100. That seems really high. Uh, so go there. And then there's a, there's a link for the Gamefly thing too. If you can't remember, gamefly.com slash Ari. Um, go there. Um, so thank you. I really do appreciate you guys clicking on those because then they keep me um, doing this and happy. So, um, so thank you. I really, really appreciate it. So, um, Zehakol, that's it, everybody. That's the sponsor portion of the show. Don't worry, it's over. And now, on to the interview. I really do like this one. And, by the way, in Toronto, I got a couple uh, really good uh, podcasts done. So I didn't think I would, but there were two, like, legitimately good ones. So those will be out in the next few weeks. Um, but now we talk about... Um, being a stuntman. It's really cool, you guys, by the way. It's, there's some stuff in there I didn't really know, and there's some stuff I knew, but I wasn't really uh, completely like up, up on, and there's like all of it. How much I pay? You know how I do stuff. I just ask questions. Uh, so thank you very much, Tate Fletcher, for coming in. And here we go, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank, number 58, Stuntman with Tate Fletcher. Stuntman? You think that's a good one? Or Fall Guy? Does anybody remember the Fall Guy? No one's going to remember that, right? That show was off the air when I was fucking 10. Nobody's going to remember that. So let's just call it Stuntman with Tate Fletcher. Oh, oh. Uh, also, Ralphie May will be um, at the Improv in L.A. Uh, March 18th and 19th. So if you're in L.A. before the 22nd, go see Ralphie. I'll be in Kansas City, so I don't give a fuck. Um, go see Ralphie at the Improv in Los Angeles, March 18th. Um, I'm sorry, May 18th and 19th. He's, I think, one show Friday, two shows Saturday. Uh, hurry up and get tickets because it'll sell out. He's, he's, uh, he's a great comic. You guys will really like him. He does a long time. So you get your money's worth and then some. Um, okay. Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank, number 58. Stuntman with Mr. Tate Fletcher. Sennheiser, man. Quality mics. We started, so you got to talk into it instead of looking at it. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you mentioned I have been off. Yeah. Why Sennheiser? Why are you so in off Sennheiser? Do you not know mics at all? You're, it says right on it, made in Germany. Oh. Yeah, right underneath Sennheiser. In pretty big letters. We've pretty much forgiven now, Tate. You've forgiven what? Everyone's pretty much gotten over that. I have cousins that live in Germany and aunt and uncle. Can I can I ask you this? Do you still believe that the Holocaust never happened? Uh, I still have questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, where are the bodies? That's my biggest question. <laughs> Wouldn't we see bodies around? I love I love I love uh, conspiracy people because you come up with this question and you're like at, on the surface like yeah. Where are the bodies? And then you're like, <laughs> you just need an expert to be like, no, they've been buried in another country. They weren't here. They wouldn't just be around on display. I think there was some lie that was thrown yeah. out them, perhaps, and they're disintegrated. Where, then where are all the graves? <laughs> they're out there. You can just Google them, and you can see them. So good. Yeah. Yeah, I have cousins that live there. I don't, I don't not, care about that not, shit. It doesn't take a whole lot of, uh, you just throw a little question in, and, and, any kind of um, smarts goes out the window, and people believe almost anything. Be like, I think you really got a point there. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, no, my cousin got sick after he washed his hands too. I think washing your hands is bad. Yeah, or whatever. I had a roommate that I used to play golf with, and he was he was a, probably within a stroke of me, golf wise. But he would play so stupid that he would always lose by twenty strokes. He would like <laughs> hit one in the woods, which happens. You got to chip out. You got to you know chip what? out. You say that stupid. I say. He's a believer. It's a, he's a yeah, dreamer. that's what it he is. is. A dreamer. He'd see a little hole yeah. through the trees, yeah. right at the green. Could happen. A one in a million shot. Like, I can get through that hole. Might happen. And he hit it, and he knocked it further into the woods. He, Somebody's going to do it. Somebody Why would do it. Why not him? But it's just a hero shot that would cost him so many strokes. Yeah. And you it's know, like, you recognize the part of that word you said? Hero. <laughs> hero shot, Ari. And that's why your people are where you are in life, and then Scottish people are where they are. Where they are, yeah. Because they they're some heroes. Yeah. Really? Oh, I thought they were the same place. as victimized. You didn't see Braveheart? I saw Braveheart. The guy died in the end. <laughs> Spoiler! <laughs> um, 
But he would wear a glove sometimes, a golf club, which stops you from chafing. Your friend. Yeah. And then sometimes he'd be like, he'd That's, take the me, glove is that off. Like, is that like guys that wear gloves in the gym? Because it's a little no, bit No, most fatty. people wear a golf glove. Most, okay. most golfers right. wear right. golf gloves. Right. But then sometimes he'd take it off for a break and take this off. And then he'd play well for three holes. He'd be like, oh. Interesting. That's it. The secret is not wearing a golf glove. And then he'd have a, two rounds of that, play shitty. And then he'd be like, let me try a golf glove again. And then he'd have like two good holes. He's like, so oh, weird. you got to wear a golf glove. You know, all those back sports, and forth. like there's a bunch of guys that have great, you know, everybody can hit a hole in one. You've probably done that, right? Do you take your shoes off that chair? Have you seen your apartment? That chair is the only nice thing about it. There's nothing nice about that chair. I got that from the Price is Right. I put a video up, actually, of my apartment on Twitter it's of your not, toilet and your apartment and your fucking pretty face. It's cluttered right now. It's cluttered. Nobody would look at anything in here and be like, boy, that would be really out of line to put your feet up on that. Just coat. take your shoes off. I know, sure, but sure. you wouldn't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have stinky jujitsu feet. Oh, look at your feet. Anyway, Jew Claw. Um, what I'm, my point is this: yeah. is that Tiger Woods, he's not hitting a bunch of hole in one, but he's average consistently, and that just being consistent makes him a fucking world champion. Yeah, he knows how to chip most out. People sometimes. are like your friend. Yeah, and they'll have real exceptional holes, and then they'll burn four. Yeah, they like, got to know what's what's yeah. the pros and cons yeah. of doing this. Let yeah. me give you a quick primer, just so you know. Prime me up. Um, because they're handheld mics, and normally okay. I'm used to doing with comics who okay. who handle this more. Yeah, your tendency if you want to if you want to turn is to keep the mic in place and turn. Like I've got to turn like this, don't I? I've yeah. got to follow yeah, yeah. it around this way. Yeah, even okay. comics make that mistake though, so don't worry about it. Well, hey, I'm not worried. You think I'm insecure because I have a big black phallic symbol made in Germany in my mouth? <laughs> I'm not insecure about this. It's not my first time with a big black microphone. Okay. So my guest today is Tate Fletcher. Hi, uh, Tate, and I go back. I don't know how many years, seven, eight years. We go back a lifetime, Nine, really. Something like that. We I feel like our relationship's together. transcendental. But uh, you work as a stuntman. I do. You make a fucking full living off that, right? I make a full living off of being a stuntman. That's really cool. How long have you been doing that? Um, maybe two years. The last year has been really but good. But you were doing it more before that, right? Yeah, I started in, right when I started fighting, I, uh, well, not really. I mean, I like in, I think it was like 2000, I was in a masterpiece, um, Kind of masterpiece, I guess you would call it masterpiece. <laughs> masterpiece called, <laughs> called, called Lockdown. Uh-huh. And, uh, Which one was that? He's in prison. Yeah, it was a prison show. Ari, remember Masterpiece? Oh, it was really, a show. You really put it together. It was a movie. Oh, okay. Remember when Masterpiece uh, put his name on the Eddie Griffin movie? Ah, uh, na 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 na. So anyway, yeah, I was working in a nightclub, and these dudes came in, uh, black guys in in uh, New Mexico. It's not very common, mm-hmm. and um, they said we need some big white boys for this film, and I fit the bill, and so. Because you're out there training, and there's a lot of shooting out there. <laughs> right, I was. I, that's where I first started jujitsu. I started with the Dog Brothers and stick fights, and then jujitsu out there. And so I was working in a nightclub, and then I was training. Wait, you did stick fights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Did you ever get in a real stick? It was fight? back when the Dog Brothers weren't a, a kind of gay, milky, watered down group who were fucking. It was just a bunch of dudes that would get together in a park in Hermosa Beach on the spring and uh, fall equinox, and and we'd fight. There'd be gatherings, and would there be like you'd fight with sticks with no armor on. And you get hit with sticks? Yeah, it was awesome. Oh, it wasn't like those Q-tip things from American Gladiator? No, no, different. But that always looked fun to me. That too. looked fun as fuck. And it looks way more forgiving than what I did. Yeah. You first of all, like, you're well, wearing helmets. My, my teacher, uh, Arlen Sanford, he... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he fought a dude with a chain, fought a guy with a bullwhip. He fought what? a guy with a bat. Really? Yeah. Just for the fun of it? Yeah, just to, and just to see, you know? Like, you can articulate movement. Like, you're much more dexterous with a stick. Then, like, you got a whip or a chain. You get one shot, and then I'm closing the distance, and you don't get another. You, you can't rechamber quickly enough. With a stick, you can rechamber yeah, quickly, yeah. you know? Just swing again. And so, like, a, uh, like, yeah. a, like a musket would be you, the hardest. You, exactly. You swing, swing a bat at somebody. Maybe there's a lot of damage, but real easy to miss them, and you get one chance. A bat. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can't re-swing a bat very quickly. Better than, a, no, better than rechambering a, a whip or Remember a chain. Remember when Bruce Lee used that, um, used that uh, piece of bamboo against... What did the guy have? Nunchucks. I don't recall, but yeah, Arlen fought game of death, nun- right? Nunchucks also. Wasn't it Game of Death? Oh, was that was Kareem in that one? It Kareem was in that one. I'm going to call this up because I want to see it. Oh, right. I have capabilities of of <laughs> I forgot. I haven't. So shot. anyway, yeah, I started. I started like ten years ago, right before I started doing. I got into grappling. I got into jiu-jitsu, and uh, yeah. there was a scumbag that I started jiu-jitsu with, and and then I ended up working with more reputable people down at uh, Jackson's gym, but um. Greg Jackson. Yeah, and, and but it just was uh, it seemed like a fluke. Like 
working in film and all that, and here's this poor kid from Michigan, and da 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 da. And the stunt coordinator is like, "Dude, you should come out, stay in my house, and and uh, see where this goes." And he I was put like, "You up?" Yeah, it, like in Sherman Oaks, he lived out in Sherman Oaks, and I was like. Uh, I've got a job where I can train and I can do everything and I don't have to work two or three jobs and I think I'm just going to stay here and play it safe, you know? And I, I started competing and so then I kind of started my grappling career and I traveled all over the world doing submission wrestling tournaments and jiu-jitsu tournaments and, and uh, placed in all the, top, uh, all the top tournaments around the world and the Pan Ams and the um, Naga and you just hit. Gra- Grappler's Quest. And I, I just, I, I'd go and I'd grapple everywhere, you know, and I'd, yeah. I'd travel around as an amateur uh, athlete. And then as soon as stick, or as soon as uh, cage fighting, it, it kind of got more on. I was like, man, I want to do that. I fought a guy with a weapon. I fought in, you know, multiple guys in tournaments, fighting one guy on one night with just my fist. Like, that sounds awesome. And so, into that. so that's when I got into, into cage fighting. And I'd only done, I'd do little shows here and there when they'd come up, but I never really looked after acting or entertainment work. And then when I, you know, got to the end of my fighting career and I'm like, I'm either going to really, you know, I start, it's like I started late. And like when I ended, I was like, God, what am I going to do? Milk this out for another five years and become like a, you know, I'd seen a lot of guys that fought too long and I didn't want to be one of those guys. And, and so, uh. Yeah, I remember when you said, we're like, what am I? I'm in my mid-30s. Yeah, like, it's like, that, you know. It's over, right? And, and so. Um, yeah, those punchy I, I, people. I go, I gotta, people got punchy where you're like, yeah, you talk weird. Or it's, just, or it's just sad and it's like you're yeah. living off a name that was and like now it's just, nah. And so anyway, um, a guy came into my gym uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, I've got a, a, a 10th Planet school there and a CrossFit gym. And he was working on a film in Santa Fe and, and he, we just got really, you know, we bonded through jujitsu. What movie? Uh, it was called Paul. Okay. And it was a alien, Simon Pegg and the, it was an alien movie. Oh. And so I got a few weeks on that working with him and, and, uh, go, what do you mean? okay. When you say a few weeks, what do you mean? Like, uh, I played a, I played a character for like that. This was recurring in, in that film. And so I got a bunch of days on it. I got, you know, 15 or 20 days work on the film. And, um, and got a little spot in there, mostly stunt work. But at the end, you can see me with the with the alien getting healed by the aliens. It was kind of fun. Really? But I then started looking at like how to make that a real career and how to really get some. So real... you did it more, just more and more. And so then, yeah, I got a, I got asked to go on Red Dawn. We remade Red Dawn in '09, and um, I barely remember that. It was this Patrick Swayze uh, mega hit in the '80s. <laughs> Patrick? No, no, I barely remember the remake. It hasn't been out yet. No, so that's why I don't remember. You smoke it. so much weed, don't you? Oh, so much. Yeah, yeah. It has. It'll be released probably this year. Oh, but, good. But it was. I remember you talking about it, and then I was like, "It was was the Chinese it. people were the bad people, not the Russians this time." But good. Then, but, Fuck it. It's about time. Hey, hey, hey. But then Chinese company bought the studio, and so they had to. In in the in post, I think the rumor is in post they had to make them all Koreans. Really? And so, so they had to change the flags and stuff around. I think that's oh, wow. I think that's what the holdup was. Anyway, but I've heard it's made and I heard it's awesome. <laughs> so anyway, regardless, I, I just went in and, and all they would have to do really this is all they would have to do is every time somebody says Chinese, just change that to Korean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then use everything exactly. else the same, and no one would know. It's the same kind of evil, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. And then yep. I actually just worked for a South Korean director. It's his first time in the United States. Uh, this last last fall was uh, for a Schwarzenegger film, his big comeback film. Oh yeah. And um, okay, so hold on. So anyway, so you get so they hire you as a stunt worker, right? And then what do you just show up day one and they tell you what you got to do? Uh, usually, what happens is they is you build relationships with coordinators with guys that are getting shows and running the shows. That's how you get the work. They're like the lead men on it. Uh-huh. And, um, what do you mean the lead men? Like they're, you'd be the stunt coordinator or okay. the second unit director or That's something That's the guy like to that. know. That's the guy hiring. And, and so it's kind of like that. It's not like you go through casting or anything else. You're like the stripper of the film world. Kind if you of. knew one of the stars, could you get in that way? No. no. I mean, you could if they're really powerful really stars. Really high and but, would take the time. And I've got friends that are like, they, they have an actor, right? Like a, a friend of mine... You know, if you're like somebody's guy, like if you're um, Bruce Willis's guy, yeah. you're you're probably written into his contract at a certain wage rate, oh, and nice. every time Bruce works, you're there for the run of the show. I heard they not have like the stunt days. I heard they have stand-in people like that, like Tom Cruise's stand-in person, whoever that is. 
makes yeah. like 400 grand a year. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what their pay is, but it's yeah. Like, I got, like this guy. He doesn't talk to me. He's got doubles. He looks and close all enough that. to my height and just fucking, yeah. he, he leaves. Yeah. I give him a bonus at Christmas and I, no, I don't crazy, know his name. Yeah, and some of those guys, like Tom is one of those guys that he, he, uh, he kills himself too, man. He's a, that's an athlete, that guy. What do you mean? Because like you just worked with him, right? He, he's, a, he's a real, like he's an athlete. That, what I, do you mean? Like he, he works, he works out a lot? hard and he, uh, does his, he does his own stunts. Like he's that guy. Okay, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask. When, when somebody says, like I see it all the time on uh-huh. like Entertainment Tonight or whatever I used to watch, the, um, but like I did my own stunts. Right. What does that mean? A lot of it means it's bullshit. A lot of it means just they I do think, one think, little stunt. I think that's what a lot of it means. I mean, I'm kind of new in the business. I don't really know a lot of stuff, you know. But like, I feel like it's uh, a lot of it is grandiose. Like I did some stuff with uh, with Megan Fox, right? And yeah. she, they had a big thing on uh, Entertainment Tonight about her doing her own stunts. Yeah. And I was super excited because I saw the thing on Entertainment Tonight, and I was like, man, it's all me, just face, like. They, the camera panning in on my face, and she's sneaking up behind me. She's going to cave my head in with a hatchet. Yeah. And uh, it was it was a long sequence. And then I see the movie, and it's like, it's nothing. I'm barely in it at damn all. Damn it. Like, God damn and it. You're like, but, oh, why don't they use that? But she, her whole thing was that she did her own stunts in that. And she, yeah. she, she, did, she did some – I mean, she did stuff with me that I didn't want to do with her. Like, I was afraid for her safety. For her, yeah. Um, but, but then there's other stuff that she did that seemed really simple that – she wasn't going to do, you know? So generally then when they say they do their own stunts, it means they've done a couple things. Right, yeah. But I mean, no, no star and no, no studio is going to let some star do well, a how, jump off a building they, they thing. They can't ensure that, you know? Yeah, if you I had to jump off from a top story, like they're not letting any star do that. Right. Like you're just not allowed. You can't, well, I mean, and you've Unless got... it's the last scene. You, yeah, you've got, you've, got five, you've got five months of filming left. <laughs> if it's the very last scene, they're like, like you no can go way. for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, stunt guys are expendable for sure. Because do you guys get injured a lot? There, are, there, there's the propensity for that for sure. I mean, you must be able to break an arm here, or there, right? There's a guy that got killed a few months ago on on the Expendables too. Really? That kind of rocked the industry. straight accident, yeah. or or just he um, got blown up. Uh, the, there was, you know, there was a charge that was put, and and, and he was supposed to be nearby. He, it, though. he was in a rubber boat, and he and his friend were going by, and it was supposed to blow up, and then they just, you know, they get Fly out of the to- boat. tossed out of the boat. Uh-huh. And uh, I think the special effects guys probably, they were unsure of how big the charge was going to be or whatever, or, or something happened, something went wrong, they were too close, and one guy uh, one guy passed away, the other guy broke his legs. and um, What, from the, the from force the explosion, of it blowing up? From the explosion. Oh, wow. So, I mean, there's all that stuff, you know? I mean, See, I always thought that there's a guy things- that's a pimp, uh, Bob Brown. He's a, he's so badass, dude. If you, and As a stuntman? As a stuntman, and, and he's – he's a, it's amazing. He, he jumped from a helicopter onto a skyscraper, onto the top of a skyscraper from like 150 feet above. He's in a moving helicopter. Really? I, I mean, and, and if you miss, that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a great scene of him jumping out of a window on fire. He's completely enveloped in flames, jumps through a window, breaks the glass, and falls, you know, 100 stories to the ground. And, uh, you know, yeah, there's, I mean, it, there's... And the, so that guy does those things safely? Yep. But, I mean, there's, I mean, he's an expert at that. That's his expertise. Is, he's a high fall guy. That's, oh, so people have, like, a special thing. Sure. Yeah, there's guys that, I mean, there's guys that drive very well. There's guys, you know what I mean? Everybody's got a different Oh, because you have stunt thing. drivers, too. That's going to be a there's whole stuff different stuff like, uh, like what I learned doing this one thing, uh, this last show I was on, I, I um, was in the air, you know, you're, you're, you're and then just kind of like the choreography of, of how you look when you're falling and, and when you're jumping from one, oh. because your, your legs and your arms, you can't flail. It's not just like you jump. It's like the director has a vision of how he wants you to look. So you have to mimic that vision with your body. It's, right. it's really interesting. It's why man. weird when somebody gets in the old Westerns. I mean, this is the first right. stunt people I saw you fall, right. you get shot and fall off a roof. Right. right. Um, and they'd always flop their hands yeah, yeah. as they're as they're going. Yeah. When it's like, wouldn't you like grab the wound and just fall, sort of and just not try over. to fall? Exactly. Yeah, you'd be dead. And different directors see it different ways. Yeah. So you, know, you have to do what they want. Right. You, the fall. You, you can't just be like, okay, I'm gonna jump off the roof. Like, no, no, not just jump off. It's weird. Here's too, how you jump off. All those all those directors are like, all right, dude. Well, I wanted to look authentic. Like, I just did this audition yesterday for an uh, insurance company, and they have MMA guys in there, and they have. Uh, they they say okay well we want you to play a ref and i said okay and they said you know and you know what that's like i said okay and they're like but you know so really talk to them a lot yell at them and get get with them and there's a lot of motion and everything i'm like 
they're like, we want it to look like how a ref looks. And it's like, that's not how a ref looks. Yeah. So, so yeah, they're exactly. like, we want it to be completely authentic like this, which isn't authentic at all. <laughs> and so you just kind of go, okay. And you go with, you know, you just have to take it. Yeah. And you just go and your give them what wa- they want. Is your instinct to want to tell the guy that you don't know what you're talking about? At first it is, you know, always, but then you're like, they're, it, it doesn't matter. It's not yeah. going to matter. At, and at some point you realize look- too, on any sort of job, you realize, oh, this doesn't concern me. Exactly. It's kind of like I, I used to be a bouncer, right? And uh, and I and I used to run crews, like security crews. Yeah. And you'd come to me looking for a job, and I'd be like, I understand that you've worked a door before, but here's how I want it done. Mm-hmm. And I kind of look at it like that. Like everybody's got their vision of how they want it to done right. for whatever era of film it is, for whatever preconceptions. And you would get called got. idiot, I'm sure, by certain people. And so whatever, like, I'm going to do it door. exactly how you want it to do. It's not my right. vision that's getting expressed here on film. It's yours, and that's cool. My friend Kevin Christie's an illustrator. You know uh-huh. Kevin. I do. Um, but the, he says that they call illustrators broken wrists. That's their term for them. Really? Because all they're supposed to do is paint it how you want me to paint it. Right. I'm hired to do this. Right. Whatever your artistic intentions are, it's like it goes yep. out the window with, with illustration. Yep. My mom's an artist uh, in, in Santa Fe, and, and uh, she's got a friend that's wildly successful. Yeah. And I was like, so how, there's so many artists. And I said, I love your stuff, but how are you so successful and other people aren't? He's like, I just found out what the public wanted to buy. I found a niche. He says, it's not what I like to paint. But it's like what they like to buy. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, there is that kind of thing. Like, I'm a, I'm a complete original artist. And at the same time, I have to sell to somebody's vision if I want to make money. Stan Hope said this about stand-up. That he said, uh, Doug Stand-Up. He said, once you've taken $1 for doing stand-up, right. you are a sellout. Yeah. You are then worried about what should I say on stage to it's what like, will get be paid. It's like everybody wants to be like, dude, I'm I'm da- I'm fucking down and I'm original and I'm mm. and and there's there's all this kind of shit or like in MMA now I hear guys all the time, God bless them, man. They're People too but, worried about being original. There's these kids Instead that are like just like just do express yourself. They're the like you want the, to. there's the thing that comes to mind, there's nothing new under the sun. You know what uh-huh. I mean? There's your your tone of voice, the way you say stuff, okay, awesome. But like all this shit about like I'm on the grind, dude. I'm just grinding down in the gym. Time to grind again. Got to hit mitts. Time to grind. And That's it's like I am with training. It's like really because it sounds awful. That sounds like a horrific uh-huh, existence, yeah. you know. And and it's like how about you're just enjoying life? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm in the gym. I'm on the ground. I'm here and I'm getting punched in the face and I'm fucking elbowing people because I love it. Because yeah. I love to work hard and I love, like, that's what fighting was when I started. And now all this money that's in it, too, is kind of a trip to see the guys that come out of the woodwork, all these little dramatic little Nancy boys that are like, I'm just here just putting in work. And, and it's like, either you love it or not. To me, you're a fraud. If you're not there for the love of the game, you're a fucking fraud. Go home. I don't care how well, excited okay, you are. But to hold watch. on. But why do you have to be a fraud? Can't you just be like, this is my job. I don't like it, but I got to do this as a job. Because nobody's that good about it. If you get that good about it, then yeah. it's because it's something you love doing. You know, you don't get to be. John Jones isn't there just because he's naturally good at it. Morris, he he loves about fighting. Marcus Camby, and he's playing for like the Clippers when they were terrible. Right. Or something. When they have no chance at even playoffs. Right. Forget about a title. Just no chance at playoffs. Um, and he says he sees him stretching before the game. He's just kind of like bored looking at his face and goes, oh, for him, this is just a job. Huh. Like he's like, they're not. I think it's time to quit. He's been here for six months. It's kind of like team. when I said that I was. That but I'm, why? Why quit when you're going to make $1.2 million It's kind of like I said when, I'm, when, I, when I was like, what do I do? Drag this out for a few more paychecks? Oh, right. What are you doing? Yeah. You're not living your dream. There's nothing to me. There's nothing exceptional in somebody dragging out a paycheck. That's like Carson Palmer. Regardless of if it's working at Walmart or if you're playing baseball. Yeah. Do you it's, know Carson Palmer? He was just, I don't know. He, he's now playing for the Raiders, but he was playing for the Bengals. And it was enough. They let enough like high – he's a quarterback, a really good quarterback. Uh-huh. And there's enough high-profile people they let go because they couldn't afford them or something. The Bengals couldn't afford them or right. whatever. And he eventually, after years and years, said, I'm done playing for the Bengals. And they're like, well, you're under contract for two more years. And he goes, you either trade me or I'm never playing again. And they're like, we'll wait it out. And he goes, I have $88 million in the bank. <laughs> I can show you the receipts. If you think I play football for the money, you're mistaken, and you're going to make a mistake. That's amazing. I play for the love, and if I don't love this, I will stop playing. Yeah. When I you like, say I have yeah. eighty-eight million dollars in the that's bank, that's a guy I like. Yeah, that's a guy I like. And and to me, and then then it's not about the money. It's about it's his not about the money. It's about his honor. And regardless of the money, at the end of the day, shouldn't that be what it's about? You know. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, because you don't know any comics that are out there, dude. I got to go on stage again tonight. I've got some fucking are though. Carp. Some are. They should fucking annoying. kill themselves. You, nobody likes that guy. Yeah, you know, like, and that guy doesn't like that guy. It's like, please find your find your druthers in life. Please find what it is that turns you on that you can't not do it. Like that's the, that's the thing we should. Th- th- this whole scarcity, like I have to do. Th- it's it's just so tiring. It's damning. It's like it doesn't need to be that way. I don't think. What do you mean scarcity? Like the, the, there's no other job that could do this for oh, me, right. so I have to be doing. No, you don't. There's no chain around it. It's yeah, like there's also yeah. There's a bunch of like this. You can go. Most people that I found like older, they've had four or five different careers over the time, yeah, not well, jobs, careers. I mean, and I get it. It's scary, you know. Like like I said, I start. I mean, I was a drug dealer for a while. I was a, a thief, and I was I was great at those things in those times in my life. You were but, a professional uh, fuck up for a little bit. Um, yeah, I was I was a professional at um. Fucking shit up. Fucking shit up. And then I naturally right. segued into the security world and became a, a, a bodyguard and, and uh, you know, ran clubs and this and that. And, and, and that was a whole thing. And, and I just start looking. I go, here's what a guy that's 40 looks like doing that or whatever. I, I, I just run it down the pipe. <laughs> you saw the, feet, the future you know, and you're like, here you are, yeah. 18, shooting dope. Here's what a guy that's 40 looks like doing that. I'm like, eee, that he lived and that sucks and mm-hmm. or whatever. And, and, you know, I just kind of. I, I'd look at stuff like that. When you're 18 and shooting dope, it's like, nah, that's a fuck up. It's like up. whatever, when I'm on the streets, and, I'm this yeah. and that, and then you're looking and you're like, oh my God, this is where it goes. Yeah, like you're, that's who you are. And and so, uh, you know, I've had those huge things in my life where I've, you know, who am I now? I'm not, I'm not running this club anymore. God, I'm not the big shot in this little town. Who am I now? Uh, I'm not a criminal anymore that's respected and feared. Who am I now? I'm not a fighter anymore. Who am I now? Yeah. And it's like getting to those things of like, who am I now? That's why it's like the internet guys are so awesome when they work their little job at, at wherever the fuck they are yeah, but- and they get mad at people that are doing stuff. It's like, have you ever asked yourself, who are you without all your trappings of your girlfriend, your wife, your car, your money? But even your job is like, too. It's like, that's not who I am. No. If, if your job not is at all. I work as a clerical assistant or as a comedian or exactly. as a fighter, it's like, no, no, you're the guy. I remember when Keith Jardine, yep. who we were both like friends with, you're better friends yep. with him than I am, but like early on when I met him, and he's, he's one of the scariest looking cage fighters yeah, in, he's in the history of cage fighting. It's like, he's yep. frightening. Yep. First time he came up to me, actually, I'm remembering this now. It was uh, one of those early UFCs that yeah. like. Not early. The hard rock or something. Yeah, it was in the hard rock. It was like it's somewhere in Florida. Yeah. Like, and he walks up to me, and I'm just like out of place. I don't want to get in anybody's way. I don't want to. <laughs> Awkward. And, yeah, and that's when the weigh-ins were like so light. You'd have like the yeah. fighters, their direct camps. Yeah. and 40 like 40 people. 40 fans. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. all that would be there. Yep. I remember the tap-out guys came in once, like during the fights, and yep. Rogan stopped the interview. The, the, what's it called? The weigh-ins. And like, oh, the tap-out guys are here. Yep. <laughs> it's just like a ridiculous. Like, what? Yep. Awesome. But I was afraid of getting in the way, and he walked right up to me, and I was like, "Move to the side," because there's a scary-looking man coming yeah. at me. Uh, but then he walked right up to me, and I was like, "Uh oh!" And he goes, "And how soft is he?" So soft-spoken, like he goes, his, "Hey, how yeah. are you, buddy? I love your stuff." Like just this kind, yeah. wonderful person. He has like a fucked-up eye and this weird goatee and a yeah. bald head. And he was like, "Hey, um, excuse me," and I was like, "Oh, okay." And I walked out of the way. He goes, yeah. "No, no, excuse me." Like you wanted my attention. I was like, "Oh fuck, what's happening right now?" <laughs> and he's like, "Are you the amazing racist?" And I was like, mm, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that depends on how you feel about yeah, the amazing racist. Exactly. <laughs> Cowboy came up to me, by the way, at, at in Vegas. Right. And he's like, he was like, looked at me for a second. He realized who I was. Right. I guess you probably introduced me yeah. to him, him to me, um, me to him. And then he was like, <gasps> dude. <laughs> that guy. That's awesome. He brought his black friends over. And he was like, "Look, that's the guy who Such makes a great of- character." <laughs> yeah, but um, what was I saying about Keith Jordan? Oh, but then I realized, like, he was like his favorite book was Franny and Zoe, right? At the time, some J.D. Salinger book. I'm yep. like, first of all, did you even have a favorite book, right? Or did you even know what books are? Is sort of that's like- all the dude does. You want to find him? He's at Starbucks in the corner reading a book, having a coffee. Really? Like that's yeah. He likes that, or he likes to go real slow on his motorcycle around. Like, it, <laughs> he, yeah, man, he, yeah, he's a special human, dude. He, that's 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 a that's the beauty of it, I think. You know, and that's one of my favorite posters is me and him and Diego Sanchez and uh, Carlos Condit. Yeah, all all on this King of the Cage poster, and it's you like, guys all trained. You all fought in the King of the Cage together. It, they they uh, I fought on cards with Carlos and Diego. I don't know if I ever fought on a card with Keith before. But you were all on the poster but together? But we were all on this poster for advertising or whatever, and because uh, we were all big out of New Mexico. And um, 
it's I don't know that like that's just a love of the game poster, man. It's like all of us that you night that? maybe made two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. You, Keith's yeah, got like fifty of them at frame. his house. You know, those things are like yeah, whatever until they become like seven, eight years old, and you're yeah. like, oh, this is awesome, well, dude. Now. That's what I thought about like the being on the on tough three, and I was like, fuck this shamrock yeah, jersey and all this shit, uh-huh. and I just wanted to throw it all away, and I'm like, I wonder if I have that stuff. I wonder where it is. It'd be nice to have that. You know, yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah, like a part of your life, sort of. Yeah, but anyway, it's the it, that's the thing is like I think you know you come to those different spots and you go, you know who am I outside all this stuff you know to get back to that yeah. and it's like when you look at Keith and how he comes up, he's just a fucking loving human looking to be helpful wherever he can in life you know and I think like there's some people that at the end of the day it's like that's kind of when you think about what's my purpose like at the end of it all I, I want to be kind and I want to do no harm to people you know and and regardless and then other than that I want to have fun and so how do you have fun it's like fuck for a while it's like i'm at a club and i'm I'm looking at girls and that's my job like that's fun and then yeah. you know great i'm fighting and fuck man that's fun that's exciting and the camaraderie and the fellowship and the brotherhood and then it's like there's nothing more fun than working stunts for me right now it's just like you're enjoying it i feel like i'm blessed man i feel and so i've had these huge different career changes that i feel like i've just been blessed by man okay so let's talk more about it so one when you say certain people are like stunt drivers and some right, people right, right, right. are better at falls right. like those seem like completely different jobs almost right i mean the skills don't translate they sure. able to handle a sure. car at high speeds some guys move their bodies very well and other guys move machines very well yeah. like if you need a specialist for motocross and that's the thing today with the internet it's like fuck, you can get guys from the x games to oh, come yeah. on and come on, sure. on wear a, a helmet you, you look know? just like our star exactly so now oh yeah good point so that's happening how much did they get paid where it'd be worth it for a guy from um the x games to come out and do it well, for one thing, those guys in the X Games, it's like MMA being new. Those guys aren't doing it for the money. They fucking love doing it. Awesome. I get to be on a show and maybe meet a superstar and fucking work with some cool guys. Right. And I get to go and do a backflip off my motorcycle. Which I'm cool, doing dude. Anyway. And you'll pay me, you know, five grand to do it or whatever it is, whatever it comes out to. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great way to spend a Thursday. I yes. mean, you know what I mean? And it's like it gets like that where it's just like. You get to hang around cool people doing cool shit and you get to create art and then you get to do it on the day and you get to see it in the theater later and that's forever. And that's, it's fucking cool, man. It's neat. That is game neat. of death. This is the one I want to, I want to play. This. Okay. You guys, right. What we're looking at right now, is game of death. It's Bruce Lee. And actually I have my Bruce Lee shirt on today. <laughs> the same suit that he's wearing, the yellow suit, black stripes. Um, Hang on, I'm gonna get all, all set up. But you and, and he's uh, yeah, Ari's got to queue it up here. You ever see Game of Death? How long has it been? Uh, it's been a long been? time, long, long time since I've seen Game of Death. I'm excited right now. I want to tell you guys too what I saw today coming in here. When I walk in, Ari, Ari's got a beautiful place right up on the hill, basically nestled. If you're not from California too, you're like you've heard of Hollywood Hills. He's I've got nestled. Too much specific he's, information. He's, about <laughs> <life>. <laughs> he's nestled right in the foothills of the, the Hollywood Hills, <laughs> and. Uh, I think it's twenty six thirty seven. I'm not sure, but um, you you you're probably not strong enough. You need to basically have ape like strength, like me, to pull the fucking door open. The thing it's it's rusted shut nearly. It's all bent. And if you've seen um, that great show, was it Wesley Snipes? I think that was in it. And Ice T, of course, uh, New Jack City. Oh yes, where they're trying Classic. to storm the projects and all that. So you come off a beautiful Sunset Boulevard into Ari's home on the hills, this apartment complex, and I swear to fucking God, you walk in there and you're walking into the PJs. It's like there's just shit everywhere. There's like a dead wino over to the left. There's somebody shooting dope up in the top corner. And then Ari comes out in his boxers, kind of, he's like secluded a little behind a tree on the upper level, and he's yelling to me from up there. And then all I see is that boxer come down and his beautiful penis fall out of his boxers. A beautiful dick. I was like, I'm up here, bro. And I swear to God, Nino (laughs) Brown is in the next apartment right now. It's it's an amazing spot he's got here. It really is. Then you get indoors. It's a mess of these cords. You get indoors and it's even better. There's nice velvet Elvis and... That velvet Elvis is one of my favorite purchases of all time. Yeah. It looks like Red Band, actually, with uh, sideburns a little bit. Because he's not really in his deep, deep fat days, but he's a little heavy set. When I get really high on um, on acid or mushroom, some sort of psychedelic, on my way down, if I'm like in the calm stages, right. I've done everything, so I can talk to you about it. But like, if I'm in the just the, the sort of thinking about stuff stage, yeah. I look at this picture. I don't know why, but I always center on the the white of his eye. Uh huh. I can I would, see that. Yeah, I was just think the white of your eye is not really painted. It's just like it's blank. Yeah. But this was painted. Somebody. 
painted the white onto this. And I was just, I always think about some human that actually took the time to like, not lovingly, but sort of love, like carefully. Yeah, carefully. Painting to represent Elvis Presley's eye. It took an exact hand. Yeah, and I think of how beautiful it is. I never ever looked at one of these roadside paintings like that, but I have a new appreciation right now sitting here today. Now, you talk about psychedelics and such. Have you done the DMT? No, I've been waiting to get it. I put out some feelers recently to people that my friend had some, and, um, and then he said he got rid of it. But, I'm interested. Yeah, I want to know what it's like. Because I hear stories from people, and then it's like, eh, I don't I've know. I've heard so much from the guys about it. Yeah. Maybe talk to Eddie about it a little bit again. To Eddie? Okay, I'm going to play this thing. All if right. You, if you want me to stop it, I can just stop it at any point. Oh, well, God, just, you are a powerful man. Like put your, just put your hand up or something. Okay. So this is when he's going in. Where are we, Tibet? I guess somewhere like that. Oh, I got to raise this volume. It's oh, beautiful. no. Is this going to have music over the whole thing? It seems like you downloaded the wrong one. Broken rhythm. Absolutely downloaded the wrong you one. You downloaded like a rave dance. Game Bruce of death. Lee. Broken right? Broken rhythm must be some raver bullshit. Oh, here we go. Nunchoku playing. I feel like we should limit ravers on the internet in some Okay, way. here. This is what he's doing. He just threw away. He had a stick from the, the floor below. Yep, I see that. And he's fucking chucking it. I, I got to raise his volume so we can do it. Um, so it picks it up. I like the noises Bruce Lee makes. That's my favorite part of Bruce Lee is the noise. God, that he's stuff? magical. Okay. If you had to bang a guy, yeah, Prince or Bruce Lee, who would I who would I bang? Yeah, ooh, they're both very feminine, right? Bruce Lee's a masculine feminine, though. He's I mean, they both are. You look at the you you rub up against fucking the stubble that Prince has got on his face and tell me he's not masculine. I think that's painted on stubble. <laughs> <laughs> It was just fucking this guy up with a bamboo <laughs> stick. Now he brings out the nunchucks. I don't see how that guy is going to fare better. Oh, they went stick to stick. Nunchaka to nunchaka. Well, this is the wrong one, too. Jesus, he's good with those nunchucks. That guy looks good, too, but I feel like the difference is it's like a guy shadow boxing. Or hitting the mitts, and then a guy in a fight that can put those same combinations I bet together. that other guy's one of the best in the world at nunchucks, yep. and I bet that's who Bruce Lee got. Oh, he fucking hit and him. And then he goes, oh, my. Oh. <laughs> Say something <laughs> again. Talk, Say something again. <laughs> that's my favorite. He wants to talk shit about it after he got one blow in. <laughs> Say something. Here it is again. Finding time. <laughs> <laughs> he smiled and he was smashing him right in the that face. That is amazing. Oh, man, I want to see what that's a fucking... Oh, that's Dan Inosanto, bro. Where? Bruce Lee versus Dan Inosanto. Dan Inosanto is a real master. He's one of... He was Bruce Lee's... He's one of his only surviving students, I think. He's got a place down on the beach. Really? And he is a boss. Like, he's an original boss stick fighter. Jeet Kune Do guy. I want to. Oh, he's killing that other dude. I want to know. Oh, that's him, right? Yeah, that's Master Don and Santo. Oh, because Bruce Lee comes up. Somebody just killed somebody. I want to see the fucking nunchucks shit. Here we go. Man, this game, this this movie was fucking really good. Okay, so now he he's taking the stick. He's got a stick. He's giving the nunchucks to the other guy to hold. (laughs) Oh, please, guys. He just holds a bamboo shoot. God, that's cool. That guy has two sticks. So this is the kind of stick fighting you would do? Yep. And the two sticks is like Krabi Cabrong, like out of Thailand is is where that art comes from. And one stick is like Salat or Kali. Okay. And very much alive. <laughs> and when your flashy routines cannot keep up with the speed and the elusiveness of this thing here, all I can say is you're going to be in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that we will have to find out. 
Bruce Lee doesn't cuss. No. No need to. He tells him what he's going to do. And he, is he explaining to other people right now, by the way? Like, about fighting in general? Did his movie just telling other people about the, the theories of fighting? He was such an original. Now he's copying that guy's thing with the bamboo. Oh, God, he's evil. Hey. He's an evil, evil little. Evil. Look at him. <laughs> There's those noises. It's like fighting a little cricket. I'm telling you, <laughs> it is difficult to have a rehearsed routine to fit in with our own broken rhythm. Hold on. He's learned English for this, huh? I believe so. Because that's not, that's not dubbed over. That's his, right. that's his mouth yep. moving at the words. Yep. And he was one of the first Chinese guys. You think about this time. Like, Bruce Lee and Richard Pryor, man, they broke racism. It, really? It, it really, in a big way. Because there weren't films. I mean, Dean Martin or, or who, who was it? The, Jerry Lewis? Yeah. Remember all the Jerry Lewis shit? Yeah. Where he's pretending to be Japanese and shit and all that <laughs> yeah. racist ass shit he did? He was like the fucking first amazing racist, the asshole. Yeah. Me so horny. <laughs> and then Richard Pryor making fun of how ludicrous racism was. Uh-huh. Like, they're the first guys that really broke those kinds of social ideas open where everybody could laugh at it and agree that it's ridiculous. Now, Bruce Lee went against his own people. They hated him. Why? Because he became a star. And they they were always background people and this and that. And then he is also in his thinking, like, where he's like, you know, you're, you're wrote, like, he's making fun of katas. He's like, your kata is bullshit. What's a kata? Like, katas are like in, in Taekwondo and shit where they go, we're going to go through this, and then we do this, oh, and like, then we yeah. do this. And it's like, they're, what they're, somebody gives you something they're else. stigmata dancing. And, and so he's like, you know, you can't, your, your, your kata can't keep up with our unbroken rhythm. Like, mm-hmm. my rhythm's not going to go with your kata's rhythm, and I'm going to strike you in between your rhythm. And and uh, that, they they didn't like that because he was like a, the first free fighter, you know, like Luta Livre in, in Brazil. Like they talk about that, and and you know the original MMA guys. And the the fight isn't going to be straightforward. Exactly it's it. going to be all different angles. It's going to be awkward. It's I remember saying something, with and Bruce that was Lee the art of Jeet Kune Do. With, with uh, yeah, fighting with Chuck Norris, I think. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Just doing like a training, whatever. Yeah. And he goes, now what happens if I have you in this position? He has him all tied up. Yeah. Where he he can't use his arms or his legs. It's on the ground. He can't. He's, his arms are all tied up. Uh, not tied up with rope, but tied up with yeah, yeah. He's got them all. And he goes, what would you do here? And he's like, well, there's nothing I can do here. He goes, wrong. Your teeth bite me. Yeah. And he's like, what? He goes, bite me. I'm right there. It's a weapon. Why not? It's yep. the only move. Yep. And he's like, well, that's not my training. He goes, well, it should be. Yeah. Why he, not? You're going like, to die it's otherwise. All, it's all, you better it's bite my open. neck. Yeah. Yeah, he was one of the first guys to bring grappling into striking. <laughs> yeah, he's got the reach on Dan and Santo. In those... See? <laughs> Rehearse routines lack the flexibility to adapt. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Bruce Lee learned from you, maybe. Basically. Maybe. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just took one of those guys' Amazing. sticks. And that's in stick fighting. What we'll do is, like, we'll, we'll hit the hand. Do you understand? Because the hand holds the it's weapon. It's the first thing that's... Becomes a sword. It's the closest... <laughs> it's like he's asking one. it's like he's asking questions I want to hear that one again that was such a long one I went back too far do you understand do you understand this bamboo becomes a sword <laughs> <laughs> so good it's so long oh now I take up the nunchucks he's done with it and then Bruce Lee gets rid of the then he goes nunchuck to nunchuck. Wow, that was good. It's a good little scene, man. Yeah, it is. This is the one they never finished, right? I don't know if Game of Death was. I'm not sure. I think he like leaving the 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 fucking the the, the game of like whatever the game right? place was all like after his death. I believe. I might be wrong. Well, he and then the whole thing about his family being cursed, like cursed by Chinese witchcraft and shit. And that's why his son, his son got died. killed. No, no, that like the every male in his family, th- they were 
they said your bloodline will be stopped. Oh, really? And so that's what, yeah, it's a trip. His bloodline it, was stopped. Yeah. There's no one surviving. There's his daughter. He's got a daughter. Well, that's not his bloodline, but his name. But you know what? Artificial insemination. She'll keep that name going. Okay. I think she should. I mean, because they're not tall life, people. They should probably get with you. Yeah. Um, okay, so back Has to- anybody ever thought about buying your semen? Um, I pretty much just give it away <laughs> willingly, <laughs> constantly. So. I feel like it's not uh, a highly tradable if item. Just, if you could just sieve it from the belly buttons of women, <laughs> you could, you could uh, find it. Um, What's okay. your book you're reading there? This? Yeah. This is a book I put your notes in. Oh, interesting. I've written notes for this. I write notes for the podcast uh, questions I want to ask. And do stuff. you write notes every time we get off the phone with each other? No. Oh. Because we never get off the phone with each other. Do you enjoy my beard? It's okay. I noticed it when you came in. You like it? Let's get back to fucking oh, okay. stunt work for a second. So oh, how yeah. much does it pay? It's what's, a, norm, what's like normal you start off. It, end, you start off. End? It's yeah. a regular SAG contract, right? So okay. like whatever that is, if you're on a one day or a three day or a week long contract, you know, they're all, you know, they're all different. What's a week long contract? Well, you're in the brotherhood of the guild. Screen actors. So you get paid as a screen actors actor? Yeah. You got to be a screen. A- yeah. But exactly. I've never worked on movies. I don't know what, the, I don't know what. The and so are. like, a, uh, you know, what's a weekly? It's, I don't know. Th- 3300 or something like okay, that. That sounds about so, right. Something like that. Yeah. And you get the you get the plus 10% like what your agent would get, you know yeah. how they get whatever plus 10%. Yeah. You get that yourself cuz you've hustled your own work. Oh, you become your own agent. Right. So um, so that's what you would get and then like you get Do they have Wait, do they have agents for this sort of thing? No. It's not no. even a th- position. No. It's like, you know, there's so many people people are like, dude, I want to act or I want to do this or that. And it's like, well, you got to have a SAG card. And then people think, God, if I get the SAG card, that'll be like Valhalla. And it's like, how many guys do you know with the SAG card that will never work ever yeah. again? You know, it's just like you got to fucking the work your you got to work your ass off. Book jobs. You got to work your ass off the book job. So, so like thirty three hundred. A so day is like five hundred. A day is eight eighty. I think. Okay. And so then, so if you call me, to, like I just did a uh, in plain sight um, USA Network mega mega hit. I think I probably took them over the edge they might even get another season out of it because of my performance but yeah. um so I, i've got a like a does that, tv pay different than movies yeah it just but like a hundred bucks or something does i don't commercials know commercials pay different than well yeah you know the residuals on commercials are the, that's the shit right? well you get residuals for, yeah. for stunt work oh yeah do you get that for the movies also yeah at a certain percent not the same percentage as tom cruise would get but like well, I mean, he's a but producer. But like basic of SAG, like you he's a, work, he's a you producer. One You're week. aware of the difference yeah. between a producer and a performer. But if well, if you are a performer, I mean, whatever. But if you like, if you work as like pizza delivery guy, one week on a on a SAG shoot, yeah, I'll have you fucking get like residuals forever. Residuals, but you get residuals. But check it out. Like I was just on that Arnold movie, and I was on for like six weeks or whatever for a huge run of the show. Yeah. Like there's and I don't know what the break offs are. Like if you make, you know, there's different percentages you get. Yeah. Residually. And it's like it depends how many stunt guys worked on the movie because it's all split up in a pie. And then there's above and oh. below. There's above and below the line. So they have 100 percent of the stunt work money. So I, if they have 50 think, stunt workers, it's less than if they have two stunt workers. I think so. Okay. But then also, if you make over 25 grand in the movie, yeah. you're in the highest. You, you've made the. You're going to make the most residuals you can make for that film. Versus if you're underneath a certain number, you you're going to make a certain amount of residuals, but it's not going to be as high. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. you and I are both stuntmen. And I work for two weeks, and you work for eight weeks. Your residuals are going to be higher, commensurate to the amount of percentage money you made. Percentage or total, percentage wise. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I believe I believe that's how it works. And then you can't, but you can't work every single day. Well, I mean, it depends what. I mean, the you could, but like, it's like. hard to get work. It's a freelance job. Yeah, I mean, a lot of movies. Like I just worked on this other thing uh, with the McLovin character. Yeah. Well, like today is a. Thursday or Wednesday or whatever day it is. And I worked three days on it, uh-huh. and that's it. With the guy, with McLovin? Yeah, that's but cool. like, that's the, the, you know what I mean? And it's then like, it's done. Yeah. And then it's done. Or maybe. And then you go another two weeks before you get another job. Yeah, you know. And that might be a two month job. Right. Where you get bank. Yep. So it is, you have to keep hustling to get you're jobs. You're hustling all the time. I it's like that, it's like that feeling of like, you, you know how it is, like where you're working a job and you're like, you quit that job or you fucking get fired or whatever and you're like, fuck, you know, I've got enough money to pay the rent, but then by the time I get my next job, it's going to be, they're going to wait two weeks before I get my first paycheck and then I, I'm just barely going to make rent for the next month or whatever, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. you're in that fear place kind of like, I got to find a job to be, Yeah, I, I live there. I'm oh, in yeah. that space all the time no trying to find a job. At all. You know, no. People don't understand that. But it's there's like an illusion of security and other shit. You know, if you're a fucking yeah. bo- you know, there's no security anywhere. 
People are getting married to find security. They're trying to sign up. You know, they took everybody's pension away in Detroit. There, that that we used to be security. There's no security oh, anywhere. Yeah. You know, there's this illusion of security. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to live like an animal, do what I want yeah, to do, and have this. fun. If my friend who works for the government in D.C., or used to, um, if he's like, oh, I'm broke, I can't go out this week. Because, but next week, I will be getting a paycheck. And I know right. exactly how much right. it's going to be for. Yep. Um, whereas any one of my or your paychecks might be your last paycheck you yep. see ever. That's true. Um, That's true. Okay, so it's about that much. And then um, – now let me ask a question about the, the – I forgot. Oh, no, checked. no, no, wait. What? But then you get st- what's called stunt adjustments. Oh, what is that? So if we're in a fight scene out here on the balcony – Yeah. And I fall off into the lower part of the projects here, yeah. like a, a it's not story. Not projects. <laughs> and, one of the uh, safest neighborhoods in LA. <laughs> and and so you know how they film everything from different angles, and they uh-huh. film it fifteen times. So maybe I have to fall fifteen times. Yeah. At the end of the day, the coordinator says, "Dude, I gave you a fifteen hundred dollar adjustment today." What? And so Why? And, and so if we go into overtime too, it's awesome. So then on my eight eighty a day, which is my rate. Add that fifteen hundred on it. Whoa! And now I'm at a twenty two hundred dollar rate or whatever it is. And then do you charge that rate next time? No, no but, but but then but then made. that rate when I go into time and a half after eight hours, it's off of that it's on rate. That rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get twenty three hundred so, time and so, a half. Yeah, get, yeah. And then I go into double time and a half. You, yeah, yeah. It's fucking. And what's time and a half? The people don't understand. It's the best. My first commercial. I did a <laughs> Kia commercial. Right. And we got to. Uh, go to Monument Valley. They flew me out to where to where the, uh, the what's it called is the the uh, what is that place called? Death Valley. No, in Utah, and um, it's one of the great wonders of the world. You can take a mule all the way down there. One of the seventh. Yeah, what is? I it? don't know because I'm not the Grand interested. Canyon. The Grand Canyon. Okay, and we were shooting all around there. Uh huh. But there'd be days I didn't understand this. Like you get an eight hour day, and it right. pays five. I think five sixty. Uh huh. And then it. From, yeah, commercials are different. Yeah, from eight and a half hours to ten and a half hours, you get time and a half. Yeah. Which is like, what do you mean? You should you, you for five sixty for a day. You can yeah. get me all day long. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I'll yeah. do whatever the fuck you want. I'll yep. suck dick. I don't give a yep. fuck. I'm in. Uh, but then they give you time and a half until ten and a half hours, and then from ten and a half on, you get to get double time. Right. D- so per hour, it's a big. And then there comes a thing where if you haven't had enough rest, you need twelve hours of off time until you shoot again. Right. Yeah. 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 So if you haven't, you start off at you start time off at and double a half time or whatever or time and a half until you reach the the, the actual. So then they pay you time and a half for Saturday, double yeah. time for Sundays. So there's a point where I was making like six bucks a minute. Yeah. And I was I, – I, the, the Jew in me. As I'm waiting to shoot. I love way, that for you, four you, hours you, to shoot. you've tightened it up to the minute. Uh-huh. And I'm like – another minute went by. I just made six dollars. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. And they gave you per diem. And you're like, but you're feeding me. So awesome. Well, and, and then me up. and then what the feeding. You, how about meal penalties? Oh yeah. If you're not sitting down for a meal, or they every break you hours. late yeah. every 15 minutes, they owe you another 125 bucks yeah. or something and like that. Like, and if they haven't, then they owe you this money. But it's like, yeah. but you fed me all day long. In yeah. between the six hours, you can go to the craft food guy and be all like, day. hey, make me a quesadilla. Yeah. Make me a taco. Yeah. You can say please, or you cannot say please. It's up to you. <laughs> and they're gonna. And make you know, it for you know what you can't do? What? You cannot tip him. Oh yeah. They don't take any money. They just made a Twizzlers galore, and then they had to pay. Oh, sorry, it's 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 six hours and thirty minutes since your last meal. Like one, I only eat every eight hours anyway. Right. Two, I've eaten nine times in the last four yeah, hours. I'm bloated. Yeah, I don't want to eat anyway. It's so good. <sighs> That's my only advice I give to people when they're doing their first commercial. I'm like, here's the deal: the night before, you want to pretty much fast, and then yeah. in the morning when you wake up, you want to take like six or seven peanuts just something to get your metabolism You're hilarious. working uh so you'll be super stuck so you're super hungry because the meals they give you are so fucking delicious it's good too yeah good meat new york skirt steak yeah. and salmon and yeah, like lobster i've so had goddamn good yep oh my god yep. and so you eat all that shit too right when you're on sets no i'm careful about what i eat because i gotta perform or i gotta be in a tight harness or something like that oh so i, I keep my diet really good all the time what if you're like all right tate you're broke uh let's go to lunch you'll pound it then oh no 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 because you have to still have to eat right yeah i mean i eat a like then i'll eat, but you'll I'll eat stuff myself steak. on meat and vegetables yeah. i'll stuff myself yeah you just won't eat carbs but if i have to do something vegetables are carbs vegetables are not are they really? What are they? There's carbs, fats, and proteins. What are vegetables? Where do they fall in your Jew category? Hold on. Let me think. Okay. I'm going to ignore the hustle tone. I'll give you a minute. What are, what are the three categories again? Carbs. Carbs. What else? Fats. And proteins? Mm-hmm. Well, beans have proteins in them, but they also have carbohydrates. Are we talking about beans? Vegetables. Uh-huh. They're legumes. <laughs> so they're for carbs? So if you eat... Broccoli, that's a carb? Uh-huh. 
Oh, I thought that was carb free. So you can't eat broccoli and shit? I do eat broccoli. Oh, okay. Just certain types of carbs. You're the you one eat. that wanted me to not eat carbs. I yeah. love broccoli. Well, for the longest time, whenever I went to fucking get love the hot broccoli. Like, can I go without the bun? And just yeah. straight, what's in your chili? But I don't, I don't eat. Cumin? I, if it has but cumin, I, I can't eat but it. But I don't eat grains. Oh, grains. That's the, that's, the, yeah. that's the bad part. But then if you don't eat bread, people think the only thing that carbs are is bread because they're yeah, fucking bread and pasta. stupid, stupid people Starch. that you always have Starches. to educate. That's what you stay away from. Starch. Starches, yeah. Sure. I don't know, dude. I don't I, know. I, well, that's true. When you say I don't know, that's I believe true. you. Uh, I wish I could fire you in some way. I know. Uh, uh, okay, what, let's get back to fucking this stuff. <laughs> Have you ever gotten ser- like broken anything? No, you haven't. I got flashed unconscious for just a second once. I came down From pretty what? hard on top of a bus. Oh, really? But uh, that was it. Because you're sort of guessing as you're coming down. You're like, well, you know, what's hold- interesting about it? Like, how do you train to with, fall the right with, way with fights? Yeah, is super interesting because. I go into a fight and I know, I know there's this potential for this kind of damage and that and that, that you know whatever, cuts, uh, leg bruises. Yeah. You know you're gonna have yeah. like yeah. maybe knocked out whatever, but you don't know what's gonna happen and maybe none of that happens. Right. Maybe just walk through a guy. Yeah. So there's that, right? And so, so you don't even you're, you're walking into an accident environment, but you don't know if there's going to be an accident. But in stunts, I know exactly what the accident's going to be. I know where it's going to end up, and I know what's going to hurt. Right. And I'm willingly walking into where it's going to hurt. It'd be like willingly walking into a cage and going, "Okay, I'm going to go ahead and accept three head kicks." Or, or or whatever, you know what I mean? It's like you know that that's going to happen. You're like, okay, you're looking at a at a at a steel escalator, and you're yeah. like, I have to somersault, shoulder roll down onto the front thing from six feet high, and I'm going to fall, and I'm going to roll all the way to the bottom. That's going to hurt every fucking step of the way. Yeah, it is. You know, it's uh, it's a trip. So there's a huge difference in that. But I don't know. It's all exciting, and I, I like. I like any performing, even just like commercials and stuff I've done with no stunt. No, yeah, it's sort no, of fun. Nothing. It's like when somebody says go and you have to perform and all this money and all this time and it's all on you right now to yeah. make it work. Yeah. Dude, that's huge. And it's that adrenaline that, it is fucking, adrenaline. that I fucking love, dude. I get off on it. And it's the same as fighting, dude. Like yeah. what you do like for years well, watching you don't know you guys, how it's going to go. It's, having the luck like of watching stand-up. you guys on yeah. stage. I would just sit in awe, like mesmerized. First, I like, like really not with you so much because you're so good, but like with open micers for sure. <laughs> I thought you were going to say because you're terrible. I can learn nothing from you. <laughs> like, oh, like open micers are like uh, open micers are really interesting. So to watch. courageous, dude. It's so it's like they're so fearful. If anybody hasn't ever done it, to go out and watch those people, I love watching it's open like, micers. Early I, first, second, you're just third watching time. all heart. Like yeah. Gabe Killian, I watched that kid go, yeah, and I was just like. God damn, man. I, I'm such a fan. Like, just, it's yeah. so brave to do. But then you watch people that are really good at it. And then, like, when you go, like, who, you've got a, a great uh, skill with it. And then you go try new stuff out nice. and how it's kind of new all over again and all that. But, like, when the lights are on and it's your time and you're controlling this and this, like, when it's go time, man, yeah. it's like, that's like a fight. Yeah, like, you're in like, there like a fight. It's happen. amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, like, being funny. Like, I can be funny when you and I are hanging out on a drive to the airport or whatever. Yeah. But, like, to go and go. Which you'll never, need, ever get again, by the way. <laughs> Just, you know, that you was need the- to have this contrived experience on stage that you're going to set up. Yeah. And you need to lead into it and have your own setups and make it In work. And you're by yourself. Sort of way. And it has to all look natural. Like when I when I'd watch guys and they'd laugh at at cues in their own jokes and yeah. the first time you see them you're like oh that's authentic laughter it's all genuine and everything else and it's like none of it is yeah. it's all made up yeah well it's, there's degrees there's like it's amazing there's like there's like sometimes you'll laugh at something but it's like you're in a good mood and you just you're gonna allow yourself to laugh at the right. parts you find funny right. You're just going to let yourself get into it. But then sometimes, like, where there's a sigh yeah. or something where they're like, Oh, yeah. All cues. Oh, and then my mom said, you know, yeah. I don't know how that's going to go. And, and I was like, raise Whoa. Your voice Whoa. Lower. That's the technical it's like, stuff. That's it's the technical amazing, aspects of stand up. The people are like, The joke just wasn't funny. And you're like, You have no idea. It's no, a, it's because I was tired and the, I didn't do the sigh at the right time. The layers that go into it, I just got, I, I'd go around and, I mean, well, I remember you telling, saw a bunch telling of it. You, you and Joe and Joey this driving around somewhere one night. And I was just like, It's so such a privilege to be able to watch your acts 150 times and see all the nuances like my level of appreciation deepened for that art form i, I was amazed because i had no idea before i knew you know yeah. like you're not you're in a crowd you're not present and that's that. like i can do that no. oh jesus christ yeah, go for it it's amazing it's amazing it's such a respect for comics when we used phenomenal. to have new open micers come to the store yeah most of them are pretty cool but you've seen that open mic it's a shitty show yep. early on um 
five people in the audience, 25 comics on the way yep. back, hopefully listening and not heckling. Right. But um, these new people come and some of them had attitude. They're like, man, I gotta rock that shit. Put me right. on that stage, I'll wow. rock it. And you're like, how many times have you done comedy? He's like, man, I'm funny as shit. I've never done it. I'll fucking take this place by storm. Right. We're like, okay, the light's to the left. Don't get off until the light comes on. It's three <laughs> minutes. And that light would never how come on. How many minutes? Three minutes? Three minutes. Oof. We would just leave that light off. And we would just like suffer. Just, dude, suffer for your attitude. Nobody knows what that's like under no. the scrutiny you're of, of their peers. And it's not even your peers because you're on stage. You don't see who's out there. No. You can't read their faces. Like, am I reaching these people? Yeah. You don't, Unless they utter something, you don't know what's happening. You have sort of darkness. You're like, if I can hear the sound of laughter, I can it's see the, the same, first row dude. or two. It's the same as like fighting and people are like, dude, I would do that. I fucking beat ass da, 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 or whatever, all this shit. And it's like, you're, you're virtually naked. You're in your underwear in yeah. front of your mom your family, people that hate you, fucking yeah. people that admire you, people that look up to you, your fucking coaches, your fucking students, and you're going to maybe be brutalized or brutalize somebody in the most primal way possible. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it, and the, the, the comedy's primal like that, I think, in that I same saw, way. I think it was either Justin Wade or Don Richardson, but I think it might have been Don Richardson, and he was on real late at night one right? night, and it's dark in the comedy store. It's yeah. One of the darkest rooms. Yeah, you can get a hand job in there and nobody would know. <sighs> yes, I have. I just got, Whatever. Yes, I'm gonna leave that story. But you, uh, you and Tebow, <laughs> yeah, but uh, exactly. <laughs> but um, he's got soft hands. Somebody's fucking once by the piano. We had a porn star in there. I believe it. And her the porn star boyfriend, and they just went up to the side. Don Bear's like, if you want to go over there, just go ahead and take care of business. Awesome. And they just fucked gently on the side. Fucked gently. Yeah, <laughs> you're so creepy. Um, yeah, and everyone just watched creepily. But anyway, this guy got off stage like late at night, two a.m., and it was like the last spot. We right. Just go until it's like the, the paperwork's done. And he's like, all right, that's it. He's like, thank you, guys. They're coming. And the lights go on. Right. And he looks out, and no one's there. Right. There's literally zero people there. Yep. And he'd been talking to zero people for he doesn't even know how long. Yep. There were two when he got on, but he can't see them. Yep. And he's bombing, but he doesn't know. And then yeah. he just goes, when he's realized no people there, they goes, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was just such a sad, like, I've been performing for no one. It's amazing. How much of that, uh, Ari, is that you're performing for yourself? Yeah, there's and a lot like of that. that. I mean, because he gained something from that, right? I guess so. It's hard, man. I've seen you bomb, too. Like, I yeah. never, I'd never seen you be anything but funny before. Mm-hmm. Like, fucking, like, gut stitches funny. And then, oh, I bomb sometimes. And then when I see you clam up or your head's not in the right spot yeah, or yeah, something, yeah. and you go up, and I'm just like... There's nothing more uncomfortable. I get in my head. There's nothing I think I more can't uncomfortable. Some specific comic, and I'm oh like, my oh my god, about this. I don't. I was and you don't to. really do crowd work a whole lot. Like you don't fall back. There's not. There's I, things I, that I know comics, how to do it. I do it sometimes. There, but I've done there's it less things and less. that comic fall back onto yeah. that you don't really. You just sit up there and kind of suffer through some awkward yeah. shit. Like what's his name? Uh, uh, the little drunk blonde kid. Um, Ingram. Yeah, drunk artist, that motherfucker. Yeah. Like he, it's impossible for him to bomb because he's always in his comfort of the. He's so crowd. good with the crowd work. He's so shit, good you know, with it. like yeah. I don't. It'd be hard to see him do bad. Yeah, but it's, so it's interesting. It. Like really good comics, it's I like, think, will force themselves to do bad. It's like it's like Jardine you brought up. Yeah. Like when I feel like, oh, I'm doing kind of good against him. Yeah, you're not probably. What's happening, Tate, he's is that he's technique. working on a three-punch combination, and he's agreed with himself silently agreed. before he went in the cage that that's the only thing he's willing to hit on you. Yeah. And so, like, and like you not resorting to crowd work is kind of like, I'm going to get some more expertise at this, however I'm going to, you know, or, well, what, or what whatever. I, I, I tried to record an album in October, and it didn't come out. The recording got fucked up. I'm going to do it again in Denver in right? two weeks. Oh, cool. by the way, if anybody's listening to this, May 12th in Denver. May Comedy 12th, works. Denver. That was the first place I went on the road with you. Comedy Works is where we did 10-foot screws. 10-foot screws, yeah. Wow. Maybe I'll buy a wig and come up. <laughs> so we're recording the Saturday shows, but I'm there all weekend. But, um, but when I recorded it last time, I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bury that material. I'm just going to stop doing it. I'm going right. to work on new material. I had a big talk with Louis CK about, about doing that and about how it's done. And I was like, let me try it. And people are like, that's crazy. You don't get as many spots as him. You're not in the road headliner. You can't just go up three times a night in LA, wherever you want. And I'm like, right. no. But artistically, let me fucking try it. Yeah. Let's let me just try it. And at first it was like hard to like not do that old material. Um, but then it became like, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna bomb with this new joke that's not worked out at all. But the feeling I get from not doing well is yeah. gonna drive me to write something better. And so it's like you want to like, well, let me end with an old joke that works. Like, no, don't end with an old joke that works. You know you can do that, and it will go well. Right. So what's the point? Right. It's Tuesday night at the store. It's so interesting when, it, when you disengage yourself from your job is to make the crowd happy. Uh-huh. 
versus like you're always in there honing your skill. Yeah. That's the, the number one priority. It's not, to please, it's not to yeah. please the ticket holder. People you know, say like it's such it's a good cool, thing you're doing, man. making people laugh. And I'm like, and David Taylor's always said this, right? We all agree on it. He goes, oh, yeah, it's great that you get laughs out of this. But if you die in a fire on the way home, I wouldn't care. That's <laughs> it's, great. I, I need the laughs. I want them. I don't yeah. care if you're getting enjoyment if from you're them. Enjoying I need it. them. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and even new material, you're trying to do it the best you possibly can. Yeah. You know, like that three-punch combo he's trying to do, he's trying to land that on you every time. Yep. He just doesn't have the skills. Yep. He yeah. just has to move his his balance has yeah. to be right and everything else. Yeah. What what uh what were we talking about? now, what did Louis CK have to do with it? Oh well he he was doing this thing where he was he was doing a new special every year, which is really unprecedented. And I saw him What's in Montreal. What's his name tried to do that and he sucked after a while? Who? Uh Carlin? No. Why would you speak ill of the dead, eh? Carlin did it well for a long time. I was going to yeah. say he did it well for. He's got about ten or eleven great albums, and then he started. What he's about? Old. Uh, he then he went into movies and all that. He was a Hollywood phenom for a while, and then he. Who Dane? Who? Yeah, Dane. Yeah, yeah. he didn't do an album a year, did he? He no did way. like an HBO one, then a Showtime one, and then a, like, he did a few specials. He it did like it few, a few year. that were like an hour and a half. They were long, yeah. long, long. It was every couple of years. Louis was like the first one to like consistent like every. And it's like what it takes How? a long time to get that much material, doesn't it? Yeah, and I asked him once. And I was like, you know, that's kind of unprecedented. Like we were walking from one venue to another. And I just figured I'd ask, right. you know. And he was like, yeah. And he just told me how he does, like he buries everything. And he goes, if you couldn't do your material anymore. What would you do? He goes, would you stop being a comic? Or would you that's, write new material? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I wouldn't stop being a comic. He goes, yeah, you wouldn't. So just make yourself stop doing that material and you'll do new material. That's amazing. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, you take it for granted. Like this guy blows up like Eddie Murphy with one of his first albums or whatever. And you're like, yeah. Because he'd been working on that for 20 yeah, years. exactly. And then we saw it on HBO. But I'll tell you this. But then after yeah. that, to do it again, it's like he doesn't have 20 years That's of material now. Now is when, who are you now? They said Dennis Miller's second album suffered from that. And a lot of second, second albums suffer from that. Dice worth Clay. Like, Andrew Dice Clay had some really stuff. funny, funny shit. Next year's two years worth of stuff. Yeah. It's not as good. Yeah. Whittled down to an hour. But I'll tell you this. I'm going to record this, this whatever in right. two weeks, whatever it is, May 12th. But then... I've already got 35 minutes of that newer stuff like, right. built up. So cool. I'm going to record again in October. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the year and just record. Have you ever done um, all your older stuff like the fucking, you know, you know, buying $48 worth of drinks for that bitch and like the, that, like all that stuff? Have you gotten all that on a CD? No. See, I, I think before you move forward or at some point, it's well, that's worth, what I was going to do with this first worth, CD. It's worth chronicling all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, that's why I want to do it. I'm like, yeah. here's it's it's compared. I compare it to like a painter. Like, put that in your archive. Painting something for six months yep. and then burning it. Yeah. Like, no, put it in a museum or sell it to somebody. Let that's it be what I'm around. saying. Until it's documented, yeah. don't don't move on. Well, some of those stuff I did on like HBO Canada, and I was like, good enough. It's on the internet. That's on in Canada though. Come on. But it's on the We're, internet. Like you can find. Are it. we Americans or are we, we not? We are Americans. Okay. Well, the thank Canadians you. are kind of Americans Let's stop too. That. No, they're a parking lot for America. <laughs> <laughs> They're a parking lot and a breeding ground for hockey players, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> there are some nice strippers, though, in Canada. Oh, God, yeah. Actually, I don't really know. I haven't been to that many strip clubs in Canada. Some nice ones. Portland has some nice strippers, too. Portland? Portland. Portland. Yes. They have, well, they have a lot. What they make up for, uh, what they lack in, in quality, you know, they make up for in quantity. Okay, so what happens when you do hurt yourself? Um, you hide it. You hide it as best you can. Yep. But if you have a full break of an arm... You can't well, then hide. you have to go and take care of that. And now, do you have to lose the job after that, or do you get paid out? Depends. Depends. On who, on who the... Yeah, the, the sometimes, I mean, I, I'm sure that, it, I, 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 like I said, I don't have all that experience with it. But I, some scenarios that would happen is be like, dude, we have this other big thing, and we can't hide your arm under a jacket. Because guys would work with a broken arm or whatever. Yeah. To, whatever. It's not a big and deal. hide it under a jacket. If you could hide it. Yeah. It, but if you can't. We got to get another guy to do it, you know, and that's and you don't understandable. Get paid, you don't have a contract, and then you don't. You know, that's you're done. what you get paid for the hazard pay is because you might fuck yourself yeah, and not yeah, be able yeah, to work. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember the one time I had to do stunt driving. Uh -huh. It was for that Kia commercial, right? And they were like, they had another stunt driver, and it wasn't even that hard. But it was like they had a camera in the middle of the road in, yeah. in outback Utah, or Arizona, yeah. and you had to drive right by it yeah. with the director of photography. His eye to the fucking camera. Wow! So if it hit him, it's not even smash a remote his face. control camera. No. Wow! And so he's staring at, and and they make me drive and they're like drive by it by like, and I drove by it by like eight feet away. They're like no no no, get like a foot to a half foot away. 
I was like, are you crazy? But yeah, and that and, right. that's, and that's the head game. Anybody can do that. Like when I'm looking at a fight, yeah, I'll do that. Or when you're looking at somebody drive, but you've driven you you've driven on on sunset before and stayed within the lines. Yeah, that's kind of what they're asking you to do. I know. Except but, now there's a human life, so but now I go the, over the lines a lot. Now, now that the odds are up, that everybody's looking at you, and there's you know, it's like I would get to like ooh. within like 40, 50 feet, and then I'd veer off away. And that's the difference of a professional. I couldn't hang the chicken thing in. Yeah, the professionals can hang in. That's the like I got control of my nerves. I've got control of myself, so that regardless, I know my car, I know what regardless I do. of the storms that are happening around me, I'm in a place of placidity and serenity that I'm going to be able to perform. I will perform under and that's that pressure. Some training, and he's done this, and that's before. just from. And it's I'm a competitor. Like, but then sometimes shit goes wrong. Well, sure. But you make sure that that's outside. It's like Randy Couture said once. He says, "Yeah, there's guys that are younger. There's guys that are this or that. Maybe, maybe my the guy I fight, he's got better skills. Maybe he's stronger. Maybe." But he says, "What I have complete dominion over is coming in with good cardio and being in good health. Yeah. I have complete dominion over that. And so I come in and I take care. I control All what right. I can. And outside stuff, whatever, I do the best I can around it. You know. Yeah. And and that's I mean that's life. That's and that's what you know that's. Where this, you know, there's a lot of people that are, you know, pediatricians or whatever, and then there's people that are fucking brain surgeons, right? You're like, you know, that. that's a huge difference in your skill set. And it's like, like a good friend of mine, he had to do uh, brain surgery the first time, and, and the person was bleeding out, and he said he started counting to five, and he said I'm gonna let the fear come in until I'm done counting to five. Um, this friend of mine, and then, um, and then after that, I'll be able to push it out and, and take then care do of my it. job. Yeah. yeah. And you know who that friend was? Who? Jack from Lost. You're Actually, hilarious. now that I think about it, it's not a friend of mine. Uh, okay, a few more questions. And he's not really a doctor. <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Go ahead. Um, uh, are there chicks that do... Yeah. Do you ever play a chick? Is that something that happens also? Well, I'm... Do men play women for stunts? I'm six foot three and 235 pounds, mm-hmm. so um, I haven't... But, like, had... if you're inside a bus, can you just put a wig on? Do they do that? Yeah, or there's, do they not? I, I, there's, um, there's that stuff has happened. Is there, that is done? Yeah. Because that guy who had to drive the car for the other shots, he just had to wear my hoodie. Yeah. And that was like, all right, you're, you're going to play Ari. Yeah, that's a double. Yeah. Right. But he would do the stunt driving also, except for that one scene. But okay, right. so the women on this on the sets too. Yeah. Is there a lot of fucking going on? Between who? Between the stunt workers. No. There's not. Mm-mm. Is there any fucking going on? Not, I'm not talking about you specifically, but in general. Is there fucking going on between stunt guys? In the guys? world, there are, there's a lot of fucking stunt in the world. Stunt guys and other people on the set. Like, they're on sets when you're on location somewhere. People on sets, I mean, they've got to be on location with somebody. There's not a lot of those lines that get crossed. Okay, I mean, but actors fuck each there's other. There's stuff that happens. Actors, actors fuck each other all the time. They are disgusting. They're, yeah. Yes. They're, and they're and, and never like stump. All you guys that are out there that are looking at actresses going, oh, I really like. The, she's grosser than the grossest girl that you went to high school with. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> actors? Actresses? Actors. And actors what are kind of the grossest actors girl are kinda gross people anyway. Wait. It's their behavior, their sense of entitlement. Wait, wait what Let's did you just be say? honest. Oh, yeah. They're horrible <laughs> to hang out with. Horrible. Actresses are the worst. And you know what I've realized? There's plenty of girls that are actresses. That never went into acting, but they have all the characteristics wow, of an actress. That's true. You know, you know, it's like those people. That, it's like those people um, that uh, dramatic. They they think very highly of themselves uh-huh. for no good reason. For no good reason. <laughs> it's like reality show stars. You know what I've done? Like you've done nothing. Yeah, yeah. you're embarrassing on TV. They give you a line awesome. two minutes before you said it. Yeah, you're a fake reality show person. So good. <sighs> I worked so hard. What? <laughs> You show up when they ask you. Who are you dating nowadays? Anybody? A few people. Do you have a special lady? Not like one in particular, but like there's a few that I like. Now, when you were married, you lived here with that lady? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, here's a caricature of the two of us I just took down off the behind this uh, behind this Velvet Elvis painting. She uh, has way nicer boobs in the caricature. Than the caricature or in the caricature? The caricature, she's a lot hotter. Uh, her boobs look way better in real life. I, I never saw them. Oh, they were awesome. I've seen all your genitalia, but they were none of hers. They were so good. And like the perfect kind of milky. And like, I can't like imagine why she left. Full. Looking around. No, it was clean when she was here. Oh, you have, plastic, you, have, you have paper bowls on your shelf. I see. That's nice. Would you quit it? The attacking. <laughs> That's not what this podcast <laughs> is about. I've already done it about how sloppy I live. <laughs> What's with she, the Japanese fetish you have here? Oh, I went to Vancouver, and they had all this Japanese. Oh, they love Japanese up there. Yeah. Yep. And so I went to this place. I bought a shitload, of, and I like, uh, like filled These up my like arms. These are like gummy bears. Yeah. Are they as Individually good? wrapped. Oh, What's... yeah. They're delicious. And they taste like this one's, I don't know what, I don't know what, 
what fruit that's like supposed to be. Gummy, but they have grape gummy, and they have mangosteen gummy. What's that's a, a mangosteen? That's a Jew mango. I guess so. Yeah. Anyway, I dumped this whole like, arms full under the counter, and this lady in broken English goes, uh, "You you like uh, you like gummy?" It's <laughs> like what? Oh yes, I like gummy. Yes. No, I hate these. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to save other people from having to from eat this shit. Them. I kept taking one more. I was like, okay, um, do you learn those jobs like like the falling off the roofs and the driving? Do you learn those as you go from other people? To, like teach me how to do that, or like how do you get it? Because day one, I think all of us that. come from a highly athletic background. So that helps, and then you try to um, then then you keep practicing that. I mean, for me, it's like I practice falls and I practice gymnastics and I and I stay. Okay. You know, I, I continue to train uh, jujitsu. And I remember and an old Star Trek episode. Boxing. Where one yeah. of the guys who was not like a regular was on an away party with uh-huh. him, and obviously he was going to die. It was like an old joke with people, but like um, he he was too unready, and Captain Kirk had to be like, "No, you don't understand. When you fall, you got to roll through it. Otherwise, you're taking all the all the force right. on your shoulder, and it just hurts." Right. And they would push the guy down, he'd get hurt, and then Kirk would just roll and come up. Right. Um, but like someone has to teach you those things, right? Yeah, but I mean, I've been doing that for fucking years. Okay, but I'm, but you haven't been jumping from a roof. No, but it's like you know when I, when I learned how to snowboard and people are like, dude, you can't fall and post out. I'm like, who in the fuck falls that way to where they'd break their wrist? I would never fall that way because I'm a fighter. Oh right, and that's not how I you know I keep my elbows in and I fucking I'm gonna roll through it and I'm gonna you know what I mean? It's like, like I just I don't it, it for me it's like my skill set my body is athletically trained to the point where like of course i know how to fall i know how to access a, a wall or I, you know what i mean it's like yeah. you just do you ever do anything with fire i did i got lit on fire uh uh just part of me did, but doing a like a safety thing and we filmed some of it it was cool wow yeah it's it's interesting like all that stuff is a whole different skill you know you know what i used to do in, in israel i remember this now masturbate oh yeah <laughs> okay, the girls are amazing in israel yeah, the Israeli girls are a whole different type of Jew girl. Yeah, it's a whole aggressive and just thirsty for jizz. And big boobs is what I heard. And they all they all go to the army, so they're like. Now, how come they're all hot there, but they all dress up like they're from 1840 in in Los Angeles? Those are Hasidic Jews. That's different. That's a horrible whatever race of Jew that is. That's some. It's 16th century Polish nobles. Just it's so you amazing. Know. Well, that's what the furry fuzzy hats about. Uh huh. Dude, They're dressed up like 16th century Polish nobles. Why are they doing that? Because at the time in the 16th century, right. they were like, we should treat ourselves with like, we should walk around like just nicer. Okay. And like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But now like, you look Amish. styles change. Now you look Amish. It's been 500 years. Styles have changed. Now how about this? They're trying to keep it real like that with that shitty woolen black clothing and a shitty hat. Yeah. What's with the fucking Bluetooth they got in their ear? Oh, right. Exactly. You know what I mean? You yeah. look like a retard. Well, that's to sell and buy diamonds. Okay. Um, uh, oh, but this is what we did. Where I'd see a bunch of people like in the kibbutz we were staying at. At a whaling out. wall? What? At the whaling wall? No, just on kibbutz La Vie. It's a place in Tiberia. Kibbutz. Tiberias. I thought that was like what you did like if you were fidgeting. Kibbutz. In. Kibbutz. That's talking. Okay. Close. But, all right. Uh, anyway. and I'm, I'd, I'm Jewish. I'd spray off all of my jeans, like bug spray or oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'd have somebody post it up behind a bush with the people that were hanging out. Right, 20, like over there, twenty yards away, couldn't see. Like he'd be behind this box over okay. here, and so I'd walk by him, like walk by this guy, and the people. I'd be like, "Hey, everybody!" I get their attention before I walk by the bush. And How then old he are you? Would just have a lighter. This? How old are you? At the time, I was eighteen. So let's. <laughs> but now I'm thirty eight, and I still enjoy it. And he would just light my jeans on fire, uh-huh. and it would just the off would just catch right after I got everybody's attention. And I'd be like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! What is that?" And just spin and roll, and people would be like, "What the? F- you just..." Spontaneously combust. It's so good. It's so fucking fun. You gotta now, try it. Now, did you ever do that? Right yeah. Did you ever do that and then act like, oh, doesn't even hurt at all, as if you were the savior? No, I should have done that. Yeah, that's a good one. But the problem is, after about seven seconds of lighting up your jeans, it would start to get real hot. Can now that's the thing too, and it stays hot after the flame is out. Yeah. That's the one thing about uh, how fire moves. Like if you have a steel pipe. Yeah. And you have a torch and you light one end of it. Yeah. The other. When you take the torch off, it it will get after the flame is gone, 
it will get 40% hotter still. The, flame, the, the heat of it will magnify even after the source of the heat is gone. Wow. It, and so that's why they say when you're on fire and you have gel on or whatever, your clothes are on fire, by the time you start feeling it, when you start feel you're it fucked. warm, you need to put it out because if you wait until I can't really stand anymore, it's going to cause third degree burns now. Wow. Because but like, will, that's something they had to teach you. Yes. you have. Because if they didn't, you'd be like, I'll just wait until it gets warm. But I, I'd take it upon myself to learn that. I yeah. mean, or you have a good stunt coordinator that's going to be helpful. But I took like a fire course to learn that. I go and I went and I went to Rick Siemens and I took a driving course. I learned how to fucking power slide a car around. I learned how. Yes, it's a horrible <laughs> name. Indeed. But you know what I mean? It's like, so part of it is on me. Like, how useful can I become? Yeah. For the guy that I want to do the job for. You want to be the most useful guy possible. And you don't want to get hurt. Now, right. let me ask you a question. When that guy died recently, mm-hmm. how much did that shut down? Like I want to know how much respect they have for stunt work. Like I'm how much not, did that I'm shut down sure filming? I, I wasn't there, but I bet I bet they filmed the next day. Just they have to keep going. They got a budget and a job. Yeah, I was watching Terry Crews' Twitter, and he didn't mention a thing about it. It just and he was on the show. You know, it just kept going. Yeah, it's one of I those mean, things. I, you have to, I mean, what are you going to do? Got, shut down forever? It's got to be. And it's got to be gutting for the whole. Yeah, I mean, it's it has to be one of the most horrible things ever. You know, and I mean, they do this in sports too. If somebody dies, like. Like Hank Gathers died. It's like, well, we got a game in two days. We're not yeah. going to not play. Life goes on. Yeah. And then at a certain point, you know, with productions and stuff like that, my mom was talking about that show Luck that's on HBO. Uh huh. I haven't seen it, but it seems cool. It's about it's about like a horse races and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she says, God, it's so awesome, and they're not going to do another show. And I said, Why not? She said, Well, because a couple horses died. And I and she said, But they always die. Like I guess they just ran a derby, and they they die. Those race horses die a lot. Yeah. I guess you know. Well, if they break a leg. Then they die. And so, shoot them in the head. so a couple of them died during the filming of the show. And she said, so they just decided to not do the show. I said, Mom, they didn't decide to not do I said, who, who like Petta or somebody? When after she says, well, I don't know. I think they just stopped. They didn't want to. I was like, they don't care if people die. Like, yeah. they, 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 like those producers they don't stopped doing the show because they got canceled because people fuck. weren't watching. Like somebody either wasn't watching or they were getting sued to a point where they had to shut down production. Yeah. And I'll tell you this. That horse died probably before the first episode aired. Yeah, it could be. So yeah. it's like, yeah, they kept going and they yeah. aired them, thinking they were gonna go. Yeah, I love the stories they change. Yeah, this is my favorite Hollywood story. Some, People think there's humanity. Some manager told there's me this. humanity between us, but in the in the construct yeah. of the of the mechanism that is the there's no there's no. But I love how they just make shit up. Like, oh, I heard the show stopped because they killed a horse. And like, what kind of story are they spinning? Right. This is the story I heard. The first story. Remember when Martin Lawrence dehydrated and was yeah. running around with the gun naked? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some manager told me he's like. Um, Ari, have you ever been dehydrated before? I was like, yeah, sometimes a little bit. He goes, do you, what? What kind of reactions do you have usually? I'm like, mm, I just get lackadaisical and I just don't want to move. He goes, yeah, you ever run around outside with your clothes off with a gun? And I was like, no. He goes, that's because when you get dehydrated, it's not because of crack. That's a crack that's situation. They have to spin so everyone will forgive him. So Martin well, Lutz keep doing movies. Or who knows what it was? You know, like it's the, drug. It ain't dehydration. How about how about what Dave Chappelle up. had to say about it? About Did what? you see him he, no. on Inside the Actor's Studio? He had a great piece on there. About Martin Lawrence? And he said, he says it was when he went to Africa. Uh-huh. And he, and he goes, so, you know, and the, what's the guy's name that runs that show? Neil Brennan? Inside the Actor's oh, Studio. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really nice older guy. Yeah. And he's like, so, you know, what's, he's like, hey, man, sometimes niggas just need Africa. You know, you just, yeah. you know, you, you need Africa. He says, you know, he says, yeah, some, they, they say, here's $50 million or whatever the number was. There's a huge number. Mm-hmm. And he says, and people come out of the woodwork, and there's this and that, and people yeah, are clamoring. Must, and there's, there's war sides that are getting fucking drawn and battle lines. And, and he's like, it's just fucking too much. And people are saying this about you and that about you. And I, I'm like, this is fucking going to go to Africa, man. Like, I want to go where nobody knows me. And I'm just going to get away from all this madness that all this money and fame has all these sycophants that are clamoring all around me. And I just need to get off of it. And so I went to Africa, you know, and sometimes yeah. everybody needs Africa, you know. And they said, and, and, and that's Martin Lawrence's and, Africa. And, 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 and he says, he says you know what the most dismissive thing they say about you is? What? They said that I'm crazy. Oh, he went crazy and he went to Africa. Uh huh. And, and he, he said, said or, or they say that about Mariah Carey when she comes on and she went crazy and she went on, on uh, whatever that yeah. MTV show was. Or they say that about Martin Lawrence. Oh, and he went crazy. And he says, you know, and I, he says, and I don't know about those personal people's struggles, but I know about mine. And I got a place in Pennsylvania on a farm where I live with my family. I come to L.A. now and then. And I, I'd like just to offer for people's consideration that maybe the construct of this town yeah. 
has unhealthy. people in a whole different way, and it causes reactions like it's that, weird where everybody yes, needs an Africa in a way. And so fucking Martin Lawrence, you know, he's a brilliant genius guy. He runs out in the street and he has a fucked up day or whatever it is, and all of a sudden he's crazy or he's this. Maybe it doesn't mean any of that. We all attribute all these meanings to it. Maybe the meaning is is that the town's a little sick. And uh, you know, but it's bro- making you sick too. Put uh, the whole thing. Yeah. Right? One feeds the like, other. Whatever the reason. You know, obviously, if you're working a steel mill, you can't do crack on a Wednesday. Guys but, like, do. But yeah, but I, mean, I know it's guys not, that it's work on. Acceptable. I know guys that work at the Ford plant in Detroit, and fucking, you know what you can do at the Ford Chevy plant, bro. You can't. You maybe can't get any dope on the weekends because you're not working. But Monday morning, you can place bets. You can get crack. You can get blow. You can get really? meth. You can get pot. You can get whatever really? you want. At and they're the dealing plant. and drinking on the line while they're making your fucking car. Wow, cool. And it's all there. The bookies are there. The dealers are all there. It's amazing how that happens. And American cars are still number one in the world. Yeah. What do you drive? Pacific, dude. I'm not driving an American yeah, car. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm on an Infinity in and Toyota. Six months. Yeah, I'm not. It's doing like, look, I'll that. support America. You know what? I just like, drove a Chevy Fuse. I just got back from uh, Louisiana and I had a rental car. Yeah. 1,200 miles on it. Yeah. The training was burned out by the time I brought it back four days later. Really? It's like stalling in the middle of the street. You're like, why am I supposed to support America and waste 20 It's so grand? shitty. They had like a tectronic uh, shifter on it, you know, where you can. Manly shift through it. That's the only thing that worked. The do, regular do remember, remember when Toyota was having all those um, stuck on the Priuses, a stuck uh, accelerator? Yeah, yeah. All the instances of those right. were the ones built in America. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, all, the, all the ones built in Japan had no problems. I hate everybody that drives a Prius. Nation. Just yeah. automatically. I think they're horrible people. They fucking look down on you because they drive their shitty car thinking they're making a bigger difference than Dow Chemical makes in a fucking day. Yeah. Fuck you and your pretend healthy car, you Fuck asshole. Fuck you. Hey, I, I want to wrap it up, but I got to pee first. And you got to we'll, pee first or yeah. after? I got to pee right now. I can just pause it. Okay. But hey, before we pause it, yeah. can I say something about our sponsors? Yeah, let's say. Who are our sponsors? Well, Who's here's, paying me? Here's your, I'm paying you. Oh, but here's good, sponsor, good. What am I getting paid? You're getting $50. No, no, no. What about SAG? What? This is not a sag shoot. <laughs> this is bullshit. This is not a sag shoot. We watched Bruce Lee. That was a sag show. I, no, yeah, I know, but that the, the residuals in that movie, there were, the contract wasn't wasn't uh, written so that you would get paid for this. It's weird. Huh. It's old stuff. People got screwed back then. All right. My two spots are this, and I want to know if you can help me too with this. Amazon.com and GameFly.com. Game GameFly. Yeah. Do you play it's video better, games? It's better when you enunciate. When, oh, you're like, yeah. when you're like gamefly.com, <laughs> it's like they're like a gay show. What? Like, it's gamefly, people. Gamefly.com. Maybe you give me my translator. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So I'll mumble through it. Yeah, mumbles McJew over here. If you go to gamefly.com slash Ari. Gamefly.com slash Ari? Yeah. What can I get? A two-week free trial membership. What do I get off of that? Is that like a Netflix for games? It is almost exactly like that. Fucking awesome. Do, have they typified it that way? Do they... Do they say that? Because that's a good tagline. No, but they should. I do, because it's like, this is what it is. Gamefly.com. I feel like right. I just made that up just now and should get some more money. Don't you think? Yes, I do think. Can you can you email them? Can you call the guy, Mr. Gamefly? Uh, I'll ask. Is but, that um, the name of the owner of the company, Gamefly? Yeah. It is. It's a, it's, a, it's an Armenian name, Gamefly. Neil Gamefly? Neil Gamefly. Okay, so this is it. So you go to Gamefly, and then this comes up. Delivered to your door. Congratulations, you qualify for the Ari Shafir 15-day free trial. Wow. And then that one's checked to the bottom. See, yeah. Free trial, two games out. Okay. So if you do that, and then cancel or not cancel. And so then what do I have to do? I have to send the game back to them? Yeah, when, when you're done with it. I could never do that. I can't ever get to the mailbox again. Why? It's just hard for me. It's one of those things. Just that, get there to the mailbox. It's yeah. hard. Yeah, if you don't... I that. didn't know your name had two Fs like that. I was always uh, Shafir. Two Fs. The, yeah, second, well, the second F is for fuck you. <laughs> I used to say that. The first one is for finger me. Yeah. First, <laughs> first one's just a spelling. And then uh, from there on, it represents things. This is for real losers that don't do anything with their time but sit at no, home and not. play it's video games. People will play video Bullshit, games. Bullshit, because the last video game I played, I sat in my house for 38 hours before I thought, you are ruining your life. Oh, yeah. And then I don't play anymore, but you don't... you. Clearly don't care about your life, dude. When I yeah, when I play a video game, I I don't get shit done. I don't get work done for like two weeks. I'm like I'm I'm not gonna see you guys for a little while until I finish this until I finish this yeah, game. Yeah, I stopped playing. I don't think I, it'd be good for me. Yeah, I feel like you guys, if you're listening, you shouldn't 
you shouldn't probably do this. But if you're going to play video games, it's like smoking. If Marble were the sports guy, I'd be like, hey, smoking is really bad for you. It makes you stink, gives you premature wrinkles and cancer. But if you're going to smoke, smoke Marlboros. Yeah. Like, that's how I feel yeah. about Gamefly right now. You probably shouldn't do any of that shit yeah, or you're a loser fucking scumbag. But if you're going to do it, Gamefly.com slash Ari. Yeah. That's where you want to go. All right, guys? And if they give me that membership, if they do that two-week thing, then they pay me money. So get the two day because you know, what are you gonna do a month a month for this money no fuck that I want the fifteen day free trial you can go after that you can do it more you can cancel after there's that there's three little that. boxes you check you just check that third one because fifteen checked. days free and how do you know which one is attributed to Ari the one that says free in it free it's the trial. only one there that says free and that get your inner Jew on when you channel Ari in that all right game. that's enough so then right. I make cash I hate right. doing these months and the other one's Amazon. Amazon.com. I just ordered some MCT oil from there the Fuck. other day. Yeah, one click push. I do the rapid one. Okay, here's what you do from now on. Okay, what I do from now on. If, if you go to Amazon, go to my website first. A lot of people from my gym order stuff from Amazon. Books Tell and them. such. If you go to AriTheGreat.com, look. AriTheGreat.com. Um, then right to the side is this Amazon link. This is Amazon banner as soon as it loads up. Your internet is apparently Jewish because it's happens. not working. Why isn't it loading instantly? How many Jews do you think you okay. have listening? What is this gay stuff that comes up? It's my last I... podcast, gayest podcast ever. Oh, my Lord. Dude, this guy, Justin Martindale, is a friend of mine. He went on Grinder. Do you know what that is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he had found in Dallas, where he does not live, he found a dude who was willing to fuck him during the day on a Wednesday or Thursday, like at 1 p.m. But before that guy got back to him, some other guy got back to him and said, I'll come over. And then he was like, oh, well, then he had to write the first guy. And the first guy was like, I don't mind. Let's have a threesome. And the second guy was like, yeah, sure, whatever. So... Two guys he's never met. Yeah. Just destroyed a hotel room with a gay fuckathon at 1:30 p.m. on a Thursday. He fucked them. Yeah. He fucked them both. See, that's the way that's the way the gays are. Is they you know I was out with a friend of mine the they other night. They just arranged it and made and it. And she happen. said, "Oh, look at that's a cute couple." I'm like, "There's three guys there." And she's like, "That's a gay <laughs> that's couple." That's a cute couple. <laughs> that's a gay couple. The gays they don't give a shit. They fuck everybody. Yeah. It's like, wow. She's like, the only time a gay relationship gets fucked up is when they try to be monogamous, monogamous. with each other. Yeah. But as long as they're all cool, like two of those will be maybe primary partners, but there will always be another one. I knew a dude who said this. He goes, because people are generally are tops or bottoms. Yeah. But this guy I knew was a top. But he wanted sometimes, just on occasion, to, to be a bottom. Switched. But his boyfriend was never a top. Right. So he's like, I got to stray for that. I got to get a man to come in here. It's like, we like big boobs. I like small boobs too. But yeah. uh, you only have one or the other. So look, see that thing right there? That thing? God, I got Amazon the gay. That's a big block there. The skeptic tank sponsored by Price Selection Convenience Amazon. That doesn't even look like an Amazon link though. It looks like a turd written in Japanese. Do you or think something. I should change it to a bigger Amazon link? I don't know. Because the sec for the ca the Canadian one looks like Amazon, right? Yeah, yeah, that one doesn't though, right? That looks like uh, yeah, you're right. That looks like a Tom Petty album. Yeah, it looks like a UPS thing. Something. Anyway, if you it, click on it, so all you're doing is one extra step, already the great account. And if you click on it, then it takes you to Amazon and then you just shop. How much money do you get from that? I get like, like 2%. 2% of my purchase. Yeah. My purchase, 2% goes to you. Comes out of Amazon's end. Maybe 1%. It can't be 2%. That seems so high. Every $100, you get a dollar. Yeah. And you don't pay any extra. You don't pay 101. You still pay the 100. You know what though? I would. Pay the 101? If well, I there's could, no need for that. Cause but if I could, if I wanted to, would you get maybe another dollar from me? No, if you paid 101, I would get a dollar and one cent. What if I wanted you to have another full dollar? Then you have to spend two hundred dollars. <laughs> well, this seems like that's too much. I just want to. Just give me a dollar, man. I'm mm -hmm. right here in front of you. <laughs> you can just give me a dollar. Okay. You don't have to go. Alreadythegreat.com. Yeah. And click the Amazon link. It takes me right to Amazon. I make my purchase as business as usual. Yeah. Boom, was that that hard? No, it's amazing what the internet can do, that I can go from a link on your page, it takes me to Amazon, then I sign in as Tate Fletcher on Amazon, Yeah. and then that or still remembers, on your computer, it, still remembers it still remembers the link that I went through mm -hmm. to get that. Yeah, see, hello, oh, Ari, I'm already signed in. Is this like what uh, Lloyd Irvin Damn, does? You just earned your money. It's 50 bucks. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I pay guests. No, come on, don't be silly, you can take me to lunch. <laughs> um, But, uh... Lloyd, Lloyd Irvin, Irvin was selling clicks or something I, I, off of Google for a while. Like Google clicks, like yeah, if you'd you get like it, ten it, cents mm -hmm. for every click. or YouTube something. YouTube does that stuff. If, if you look at your videos, right. that you have the rights to and make. It's like they'll pay you a certain percent back. 
Amazing. Because then the advertisers that are on there that can be seen, the, right. the things that pop up that right. get annoying. Yeah. It's like for every hundred of those that pop up, one guy's like, well, what is this thing? Crazy. And so they're like, that's worth two cents. Right. Per click or whatever it is, you know? It's a whole new you. world out there. You geeks are able to make a lot of money. I'm not fucking coding it. I know. You just look like a geek. Uh, have you ever had something with this, by the way, you don't where, have where a director that. tells you, uh, I want you to do it look like this, and you're like, I physically cannot do that. Like, I, I will not be able to fly that far in the air without a harness. Oh, no, or no, like, no, no, no. You don't say that. I, I can do anything. But, I mean, are, there must be some things where you're like, that's just not, I can't put my arm that far behind my back. Well, I, 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 you know, that's not the way you say it. You go and, and your, coordinator you then, your coordinator comes up and he's like, so what can you do? How can you make it look like this? What can you do like this? Okay. And then we, you, you got to sell it back. And then you go, oh, let's film it like that. Dude, it can look just like this. I, feel like I can do it like this or this. Yeah, or yeah. if you want that, I'll, yeah. need, I'll, need some, I'll need to be shot out of a cannon because I can't fly that yeah. far with my legs you or just, something like that. You know, or, you, need, you just give them options that are better because yeah. usually as the athlete, you have better ideas than what they're talking about anyway. And if they're wanting to talk something that my human body can't do, yeah. they're talking about CG or they're talking about some other thing that's going to cost money. Yeah. And they don't, they're allergic to that shit. So they're oh, like, right. oh, yeah, 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 let's do it this way. They're allergic to money. <laughs> that's so hot, easy. Sorry. It's one of the biggest Jew things. Tay Sachs and we're allergic to, <laughs> to um, <spending laughs> money to CGI. Where are we going to have lunch? Um, where do you want to go? I feel like I might pause for this, but we're almost. Uh, let's pause. Let's 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 clear. Well, it I up. just like with one more question, then okay. we're done. I think. All right. Oh, how often do they put you in roles? Like give you like, hey, do this. See, I'm big, right? I'm a big person, uh -huh. and so a lot of actors aren't. Yeah. And um, so I I don't. There's not really anybody I can double. I mean, like my buddy doubles The Rock and fucking. But not doubles. I mean, like give so, you a part. So like to double guys, yeah. that would be like a really good job to get. Like if there was an actor like Vinnie Jones was like, I need you to be my double. Okay. And then I'm written into every time Vinnie works, especially if he's like a fucking working actor, like working all the time. That's awesome for me, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have that luxury generally, yeah. and so um, and so what I get is is stunt performing roles. You know, there's stunt guys that you'll never see that are like, there's the mercenaries up on the roof, and they get shot, and they fall off the roof. Or whatever, but you actually see their faces. But, not, but, but not they've got a balaclava on or something, maybe. Maybe you don't even see their faces oh. or, or whatever, you know? Um, there's all kinds of places for stunt guys in there. Usually, it's like that. But then sometimes, if the director likes our look or whatever, they go, okay, you're going to play this role, and yeah. this guy just dies horribly at yeah. the end. Or it's like a stunt-heavy role. Like, and that's a stunt performer. That's like Jardine. That's mostly what I do. I saw him on Breaking Bad. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, does he get that from, was he a stunt worker and they gave him like a, like a full lines or do they, no, you, he's or like, they hire him to do the lines? You get hired. You get, you just, you know, what you're basically doing, what I'm doing is my acting role yeah. isn't big enough to, to hire another man, which would be paid the same yeah. as the actor to double him. Right. So when you double, just, that means you're doing his stunts. Yeah, where I'm pretending to be another guy. Okay, okay. You know it's what not, I mean? It's not, so, oh, the stand-in is the other thing. A stand-in is just for lighting. Just and the stuff. lighting. That's yeah. what Tom Cruise has. He has well, his own stand-in, and he's got a stunt double also. And his own that, that oh, okay. works out the stunts beforehand, and then he goes through and does them. Wow. So different act, but he he can do that as a producer. Like it does, you know what I mean? It's like he's not. Yeah. It's it's a different thing. Yeah. Um, so they don't ever give stuff for a second. Do, do they ever give you? Um, so they never give you speaking roles where they're like, "Oh, we need some guy to yeah, yeah. come in and say." That's what I get. You better get off my lawn. That's what I get. You get that. Yeah. As you're already doing stunt work for for other parts in the yeah. movie. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Like in Jonah Hex, I was like that. In because um, at some point they're like, "We need some guy for an hour, one shot. Let's just get like, what are we gonna yeah, have auditions long? for this? Say, hey, you're fine. Can you say, give me a beer? Sure, sure. Do you do a deeper voice? You're in. Yeah. So they do that. So that's yeah. an extra bump and pay, right? If no, if you get a, a speaking role for something, no. no yeah, as a stunt worker, you're, I mean, to me, you're more valuable than the actor is, but uh, to them, probably not. But, um, but you don't get any extra for, you're, extra. You're, yeah, no, you're oh, you're wow. there, you're there to be available to work, you know. Oh, okay, so whatever they need for whatever much. that is, you're already on the job, you're already being paid, you know. And they don't ever tell you to, like, pick up a box and bring it over here. That's something. That's not the kind of work they would ever tell you. To no, do. like that's grip work or something. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That first comes from, I remember picking something up. They're like, oh, look, the box of Chex Mex is in the shot. Right. So I just picked it up and, like, moved it outside because it was right next to they me. They don't like, like all right, that. someone else will do that. I'm like, uh, it's okay. It's two feet. Well, but a lot of reasons. But it's, like, somebody's job. The, and it's not only somebody's job. Like, a set dresser, 
then they need that for the next shot. Where the yeah. fuck did Ari put it? Oh yeah. Like they don't, you know what I mean? They yeah, they yeah. want everything organized so that they know where it is for the next thing too. So there's all that. Yeah. You know? So I don't. I try not to fuck with that, and I, but then I'm available. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna pee, and then anything else you want to tell me about the stunt work that okay. people should know. All right. Think for a second. All right. All right, let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. And let's then wrap we'll, it we'll up. go to rounds. Let's wrap it up. Um, uh, all right, so is there anything else? Speaking like, of what do wrapping people not know up, about? Yeah. how often do you wrap it up? Do you use condoms ever? Yes. With girls that aren't prostitutes? With regular girls, do you too? Oh, I don't use it with prostitutes. I want, I want to feel their pain. Don't act like they don't <laughs> demand that you use a uh, condom. They do, actually. That's a weird thing. That's a cool thing about prostitutes. It makes me trust them more. Where yeah. they're like, you're putting that on. Like, they just put it on you. Yeah, they're like, they're, there's like, Otherwise, there's no deal. Otherwise, yeah. And it's like, I like that. That means you pr- probably do that with other people, too. That's Except good. for their crackhead boyfriend. That's at home. Oh, yeah, at home. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> but um, uh, I almost, age. I usually wear it. Like, for most girls. Not percentage, because when the girls that I don't wear What on, kind do you wear? I just got this new kind, the purple Durex. I've heard of Durex. Or what about skin? Have you heard of skin? The, it's S-K-Y-N. like S-K-Y-I-N no. and something. I've not tried that. It still seems to me like lamb skins. What about uh, is that against Judaism? No, because the purple Durex, it's it's super lubed up on the inside. It's right. like one of those so it feels feel, good. Feel like nothing. Do you come quicker with the condom on? No, wait, wait, no. Way opposite of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you? I come right as soon as I put it on. As soon as you put the condom yeah. on, <laughs> you like safe sex. It's such a huge turn yeah, on to me. Awesome. All right. So what else should people know about about, about uh, stunt work? About stunt work that yeah. they might not know that you're well, like just a misconception. I'm a big I'm a big believer in like do whatever your dreams are and follow that. Uh huh. But like what I got told about stunt work too is uh, don't do that and keep doing whatever you're doing to make money because there's so many people. Don't that do what? Don't go into stunts. Oh, and just because you you'll you'll, just... you'll never succeed at it. Um, because there's so many guys and it's such a tight group to get into yeah. and so many excellent people. But you found you you've gotten your way in to the point where you're I like, refuse to be told no. Yeah. But it's it's wicked difficult and it's a it's a it's a you know I mean I went on an audition yesterday it's like it's like heartbreak like man they really like me for this oh I didn't get this oh it's really did it uh, you know and like dude it's like you're in that space all the time yeah you know? it's tough to most be, people don't have the heart for it to say like it doesn't matter it just most means they like don't some have the dude. heart for doesn't it doesn't mean you're negative yeah, who knows how it matters. yeah i didn't get this part on this this movie operation geronimo and i got another part yeah. and i was like why'd that dude like anson something or another some yeah. dude that's on like he hell on wheels or something it's some tv show they're filming up in canada and uh and i and i saw the producer and i was like hey bro uh you remember when i auditioned for that part that that guy got and uh-huh. he goes oh yeah he says you were you were fucking excellent. You are our pick. He says, the director loved you. I love you. Like I was like, awesome. Right on, man. Thanks a bunch. I said, so so what happened? Why didn't I get the part? And he's like, oh, you're asking why you didn't get... I said, yeah. And he says, well, we liked you all the way through it. And the producers in L.A., though, you know, they had their money and they, they're like, uh, well, we don't know what about this part. And me and John would always say, hey, Tate, Tate, we got the guy. Yeah. And, and then they ended up getting this guy because he was just on a TV series. Last and year, like, yep, fine. and that and that Can't sells fight. and that sells overseas. Yeah. He's he's out there and readable as another personality that people have seen, and so that's what you need. And he says that's what it was about. He's like, so the guy's telling me I was better for the part, yeah, but, but I didn't get it because. Thing. And I was like, God, it's so how freeing is that to know as yeah. an actor or as a performer? Renazisi said this once oh. at, on that on that Mall Cop or whatever right. movie that he was on with Kevin James, where Kevin was casting his next movie. Was was Renazisi on Mall Cop? Yeah, he was. Uh, and he was casting his next movie, and he was like getting a haircut or something like that. And somebody would come by with a laptop and say, "Hey, we, I don't know what the part was. It's like pizza guy. Right. I don't know why I always say that for parts, but like pizza guy. It's like, hey, uh, we need you to pick a pizza guy. We narrowed it down to three or seven, whatever it was. Right. And they, it's like they showed him one. He goes, Yeah, that, that's fine. That's good. Yep. And I'm like, There's some other guy who's never second or third or fourth. It was like, Man, I fucking nailed that. I went all the way through. I did producer session, did casting director session. He's gonna fucking love it. And then he didn't get it. And you're like, What did I do wrong? And you're like. M- you weren't first wrong, on the list. You were third instead of the first. Yeah, that's what the uh, it's, it's this, this guy this guy told me once. He says, "Tate, even if they tell you what it's about, yeah, it's never about what they say it's about." He's like, yeah. "They don't even know what they it's about. Right. It's like it, none of it means anything." That's a trip. That Kia commercial. I was just taking a commercial acting class. I don't know why I've talked about this one so much. I guess this is my first one, so I didn't know what I was doing. Right. And um, we're almost done. No worries. And um, and um. I asked them why I got it because I assumed this was an audition. You had to look out your window, enjoy your 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 um your standard air conditioner or something like that, and just start screaming like yes because you're so happy about it. Um, 
Just put it away for three minutes. I'm sorry, man. I'm looking at this picture of these guys, and uh, and I'm like, what is it? He's like, oh, I had to get an EKG, and so they shaved just that patch of chest hair off. On Clay's chest? Uh, the, I, I think it's on Isaac. Isaac's chest. And so they just shaved a patch of yeah, chest weird. right? Yeah. How creepy are they? Oh, and Clay has a shaver, too. Yeah, they both did it, box. I guess. <laughs> Dirty fucks. Um, I can see Clay doing that to a solidarity because his looks a lot smaller. Could be, yeah. Isaac really wants the extra mile. Clay looks like he's just like a razor and be like, I'll give you one inch. Yeah. And that's it. Make it work. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, uh, yeah, I was like, did I get it because I like looked so like, like I was loving the air conditioning so much? Because that's what I was really trying to do during the audition. Uh huh. I was like, let me really feel like I'm loving the standard air conditioner. And they're like, oh no, the way you screamed is like dorky. We liked it. Right. I was like, the scream? That's I wasn't what, even you know what? It puts part. me at, it puts me at ease more than anything. I go in. You know what I do now is I look at the casting directors and shit and all yeah. that shit and all those cocksuckers in the room, and I look at them like I hate them. Really? Like I'm like I've got disdain, and I'm like, Why? you guys are like whatever. Because I used to really care, and I'd be like, oh hey, how are you, sir? Da da da. And it's like it's none of that. Like you know what I get cast for? What? It's like girls that come up and want to fuck me. They don't want a gentle cuddling session. Like any girl that approaches me and is like, dude, I'm really horny. I want to fuck that guy. And they're looking at me. Yeah. They want to get handled by a gorilla. Oh, right. You know what I mean? And it's like the same thing with these guys. If they look at if Kevin they're, Christie, if they're, if they're looking they at want me someone for, to enjoy their... If they're their looking stuff. at me for a movie. I don't yeah. know who Kevin Christie is. He's sorry, sorry, Kevin. Um, they, they want me to be a, a scary Nazi Aryan or they want me to be in a biker gang. Or they want me to be like, fuck you. They want that all the way through uh, the audience. So I'm just like, fucking just whatever. I don't give a fuck anymore about all that. Because then you look more like a badass. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. That's how Michael P. Keaton, they said. Uh, I don't know who the fuck that is either. Family Ties. That's the character's name for His a name is P? Michael P. Keaton. Michael Keaton. Oh, no. Oh, Alex P. Keaton. That's who it was. Okay. Alex P. Keaton. Michael Keaton's Michael another Keaton, actor Batman. that was in yeah. a cocaine movie. You think Batman, I think cocaine. Yeah. Uh, right. But but Alice Keaton, what's his name? Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. Um, they said he didn't get that part in the beginning for Family Ties because they said he was a dick during the, the thing. And the rumor was that his agents had to call back. Like, no, he was a dick in the audition because that's his character. Who did get the part? Michael J. Fox. No, who and, was gonna? I don't know. Imagine. And later. Because imagine if somebody else would have gotten the part. Maybe like is. Doogie Hauser got the part and he ends up with Parkinson's. Oh, Doogie Howser must love himself now. You know? I don't have Parkinson's now right? because of that. That's, they talk about the curse of family ties. Yep. One out of every six regulars um, <laughs> had Parkinson's in the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so was there anything else that you wanted to I share? I do man. Work? That's it. Well, that's cool. Thank you. People can call in and, and we'll, we'll field those questions later. Call in now. We'll talk later. 555-217-9874. Amazon.com. Slash no, not Ari, Amazon. Ari, Ari the Great. great. Ari the great. Dot com. Click on the brown. Click, thing. Maybe I'll click, get a better banner. Click the brown it. dookie banner. Yeah. Gamefly.com slash Ari. All right. <laughs> Two week free. What do you have coming up? Anything? Shoe trial. Anything you want to promote or anything? I don't know. I I've got a. Uh, I'd really like to get this progressive commercial I tried out for yesterday. It's not going to help. And this, that, not this help won't or, help or that. Or hurt. Yeah. Um, uh, the Last Stand, Arnold's first movie back. The Last Stand. It's called The Last Stand, and I have a very prominent role as a bad guy in there. With Schwarzenegger? With Schwarzenegger. No, Schwarzenegger and Stallone? No, Schwarzenegger and Stallone is another one that they're filming right now. Oh. But uh, The Last Stand ought to be out uh, in in the fall, maybe? Do you ever know when you're working on a movie that it's shitty or good? Can you tell? Can't tell, man. I worked on The Longest Yard, and uh, one of Adam's Is that Sandler's, what you met Diaz? Yep. That's where wow. I first met John. Dude, I met that fat fucker. He was, here's a 350 he so pound fat, guy or 400 and some pounds. And he is, it's, it's 95 degrees in New Mexico. We're at 7,000 feet altitude. It's hot as shit out. We're on a football field. And here's this huge fat Cuban guy. And he is rapping, ready to die, the whole album. Fucking, and it's awesome, dude. And him and like Michael Urban and Nelly are over there, and Joey is just taking them to town. It was great. <laughs> Trying to have a cigarette. Let's go burn a number. Like, it was awesome. I was like, dude, we got to get this fat motherfucker some chlorophyll right now or something and a glass of water because he might die this afternoon. And in the middle of a rap lyric. And, and then we ended up being great friends. And, you know, it was amazing. Then I moved to L.A. on the job. But anyway, my point back to the thing is one of Adam's friends was doing a bunch of behind the scenes filming and a bunch of stuff. And he yeah. edited up a thing when they did the rap party for Santa Fe before they moved the location to L.A. LA. Yeah. And it was awesome. It was a dirty, awesome, like 
football movie, like any given Sunday kind of awesome, like gritty, fucking cool, cool movie. Oh, from the same footage. And then it ended up being the shittiest movie ever. Whoever got the editing for the end of it, yeah. it was like corny and cheesy. And like I was like, God damn. So you I, really can't tell I what I thought it was going to be a banger. So much of the artistry comes from the editor, I think. Editing and post or whatever they those, call it. Those post. editors and whoever does the yeah the post stuff. Wow. Dude, they, they, they make it or break it. And uh, wow. who knows? I don't know how that magic works. I, I'm just, that is kind of magical the way you talk about that. Like you can make it into a cool movie or just a family-friendly movie. Dude, it's amazing. It makes all the difference. Wow. I read the script for My Name is Earl, the, uh -huh. the pilot script. Yeah. Zizi had it. Yeah. And it was a badass script. It was dark. Right. And fucking like dirty jokes. Right. And I'm like, this is going to be a cool goddamn show. And the show was fine. But it was like cutesy fine. Right. And I was like, oh, you took all, all the fucking meat out of this. It's amazing like how what a, what a difference that stuff makes. Yeah, and know? they had to because it went for fucking five or seven years or whatever it was. Right. And it's like I guess it was a good decision monetarily. But well, like, and that's the thing. You know, it's like it blows my mind when uh, when Joe talked about being on that show. Fear Factor? Somebody's talked about being on this show with this thing and then there's this girl and then this guy and this girl are supposed to kiss and it's like a late 90s show and it's a black girl and it's a white guy supposed to make out. Oh, yeah. And they're like, the, they ixnade that because they said the rest of the country isn't ready to see an interracial yeah. makeout scene. And I thought, we're that racist as a fucking country still in the late 90s? Like, it, it's amazing to me. Yeah. And so, like, the stuff like that that was really funny that you're reading, they're like, there's some group, there's some governing body that looks at that and goes, nope, too soon for that. Yeah, yep. we can't do it. It's like, here's sure, what'll give okay longevity. With it. We're okay with it, but they won't it's be like, okay with it. We, we really like half and half. Most people are just skim milk, though. Let's just go with So let's just get the skim milk on. But that, to me, is why so most movies shitty. suck. That's why most movies suck. I agree. Because it's gen just generalization hey, of the, you art seen forms the in America. The Raid? The Raid. It's an no, Indonesian it action film. It looks cool. Holy fuck. It's good? It's amazing. It's so cool. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. All right. When you watch movies like that, do you, do you, can you see the, the stunt work that went into I'm it? I'm starting to get better and better at it. You okay. know, it's really interesting, the stunt work and watching the finished product on a, on a film. It's kind of like being in a fight or like not even being in a fight but boxing. Yeah. And like if you box, with, when I started boxing and I go with a really good boxer, I wouldn't even know where I was getting hit. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh. And like I'd feel the hurt before I knew the shot was there, you know. Yeah. And uh, and those shots hurt way more. But like your eyes, all I can say is your eyes get better as you start to spar more. Yeah. And I start to see more. And then there's guys that suck worse than me, and I'm seeing more than them. I'm hitting them, and they're not knowing. Yeah. And so there's that kind of thing that happens, and I feel the same thing. Like as I get more adept at doing the work and at 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 studying it, I can start to see where it is. And in that Indonesian movie, there's no stuntmen in there. There's like 50 actors, and I'm sure all of them died. There's one uh -huh. stunt coordinator. It doesn't have any stunt performer credits, and then it's all these actors. And they do some shit in there that's like, holy fuck. Badass. And it's filmed in Indonesia, so you know that they they don't give a no shit about people. No regulations. There's like, zero. Yeah. As long as you kill us in 100 Nobody's people, Nobody's looking count. at that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was phenomenal. But that's the, the director for this Arnold movie that I just did. Um... The guy that directed that movie is one of his heroes. Who it's the South, so the South Korean director, director that did oh. Arnold's movie looked up to the guy that did the raid. The so you see the movie. raid. So I'm thinking that Arnold's movie might have flavor of that. That Sometimes. kind of but like crazy like, but action. Like the, the comics I looked up to, I right. wasn't able to, to fulfill the stuff I liked about them. Right. You know, right, for right, like right, a long right. time. Like I don't know how to do a bit that harsh. I yep. like it, but I don't know how to do it. Yep. And then you're then you're humping your microphone stand on stage, pretending stand. that you're raping it. Raping it. Yeah. Got a rape. Rape squad. That's the new death squad is rape squad. Rape squad. Ari Shafir is doing it. Uh, Renzizi is backing him up. And uh, Tebow is the quality uh, quality editor on it. We should just go with a, with, a, with a billboard outside or just a big sign just saying discount rapes. Sam Tripoli was going to be a part of it, but that's just a Saturday night for Sam. It's nothing special. <laughs> All right, fuck. Hour 49. This, this show is going to be two hours. The intro. All right. All right. Well, good. So nothing to promote? Uh, no. Okay, that's no. cool. Thanks, man. All right, man. Boom! There it is. 58 in the books. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. 
I like these. That was a decent one. I liked it. Um, go to arishafir.com and see all my tour dates. And you can click on those banners uh, to visit my sponsors, Amazon.com and Gamefly.com. Fuck, I forgot to tell you this in the introduction. God damn it. If you go to, game, if you go to Amazon.com and click on that link, once you click on it, um, bookmark it. And then you won't have to go to my website anymore. So you can just bookmark Amazon. If you do a lot of Amazon shopping, just go through my website. Once you click on the banner and it opens up Amazon, then bookmark the Amazon. And you'll just always, if you go to that bookmark, you'll just always be supporting me and my show until I die. And then they will revoke that deal and it won't support anybody but Amazon. But until I'm dead, please go to my website and bookmark that shit. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, if you want to contact me with anything, I've been recording those podcasts with the provider, the prostitute, the escort, whatever you want to call her. Um, once we get like seven or eight done, we start getting our feet wet, um, so to speak. Uh, unless it wasn't so to speak, and that was a term for fucking somebody with your toe, just putting it in their vaginas. Would that be getting your feet wet? Uh, until then, um, until then, nothing. We're just getting them ready. So we've got like four tape. Once we get like eight or nine, whatever it is, then we'll start putting them out. So look for those soon. And if you get, if you have any questions, uh, send them in to me at contact at Ari Shafir.com or Ari the Great.com. Either way, it still gets to me. Or you can email her. Um, her email address is goodygoodyx at gmail.com. It's G O O D I E. And then again, G O O D I E, letter X, at gmail.com. Or write to me. I